The Drive-By Podcast is proud to welcome a brand new sponsor this week, Playground, where the gaming experience is like no other. Check out our brand new game show and weekly promo. And yes, I say our because... I am your host, Freeway Frank. Every Sunday and beginning this weekend, I can't wait. It's the launch of Chase the Ace with a shot at, get this, a $25,000 progressive jackpot. And somebody will be walking away with the lucky keys. That's what we're calling finale night, lucky keys, to a fully electric, get this, Mazda MX-30 GT worth 40000 bucks. Check out all the details at playground.ca and listen in later on during this podcast. And I'll tell you more about Canada's premier destination for electronic gaming devices and poker. And that's Playground. Enjoy the pod meanwhile. This is the Drive By with Freeway Frank. Frank Spadone. It's not Spadone. Technically, it's Frank Spadone, You're if you right. say it the Italian way. Is that my house? Frank, what's happening? You know, it's great to be at your house. Actually, we're in, <laughs> we're in the place that Italians hang out all the time. We're in your basement. In my basement. Yeah. yeah. Minus the, because I don't eat meat, there's no prosciutto hanging, no, no capigol. This would have been the candina. This would yeah, have been, yeah. It should be. <laughs> but th- it's, it's hot. You did a great job. You got Thank you. Ceiling. It's like you're not, you don't feel like you're in a basement. No, I purposely, my wife and I actually thought it through. And uh, we made the ceilings, you know, especially for the egos that come in here, nine feet high. So, <laughs> Frank, <laughs> honestly, it's great to see you. And, uh, you know, Frank and I and our uh, our producer, because he's just become your producer too, Frank. Yeah. We've been hanging out with my wife for the last, I think you got here two hours ago. Yeah. And so we could technically have started recording because we had two hours. The pre-podcast, which people will yeah. never see, was actually fantastic. It was great upstairs. Yeah. I, it, and, you know, it, it, it figures. You come into an Italian home. And your wife, she's, she's she, become Italian, I think. She's become Italian, but she's technically... Say the word. Say, say it so I don't get in trouble. Because... Um, Manj- we, Manj- cake. She's... Well, Technically, she's, but she's 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 no longer leaning manja cake because she spent 15 years with me. Yeah, so. and listen, yeah. manja cake is even it's sort of uh, endearing and it and, is. and kind of like uh, we're 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 kind of hypocrites Italians when we call Canadians manja cake because what Italians noticed is when like people like my dad when they came here they noticed that like we would eat the paninos right like we. Um, you know the Italians would eat those buns and stuff, and they noticed that 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 the Canadians ate that that the white sliced bread. white bread, yeah. and it looked like cake to them. Uh, what, <laughs> what are they eating? They 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 eat a cake, manja cake. So that's exactly. it's not really. But then it's weird. Italians are the ones that took that sliced bread and shoved chocolate in between it and ate it. Who's eating the cake now? Exactly, it's us. It's and listen, exactly. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. And yeah. I'll tell you something. That that's something my kids are not going to be able to experience like already we got pressures our kids uh and now we're going on a subject but um <laughs> uh but uh you know there's social media nowadays yeah. but they're never going to experience well we did opening up their lunch and having a nutella sandwich nice and warm and melt you know with the yeah. they're never going to have that speaking of nutella or anyway. my my uh non back in the day we used to get literally two slices of tomato in between the Italian bread, right? With <laughs> yeah. the oil. And literally, right? Yeah. And you've talked yeah. about this in, in your stand up. People think well, we're not joking. This was no. like as raw as a sandwich. Then you maybe, if you were lucky and you know, things were going better, you had some capagol, you had some prosciutto. But well, if not, it was for me it was tomatoes and oil. Or like yeah, and and and, and rapini, like and, uh, yeah. like dandelion. <laughs> and I talk about it. On the stand-up, I had people like, "Oh my God, he's eating grass!" Like, yeah. No, he relax. It's rapini. It's green sh- in it. Even yeah. s- my sister talked about how my my mom would fry the carciofi. You know what those yeah. artichoke, artichoke hearts? Yeah. And uh, and they 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 batter them and fry them. And my sister was eating them once, and it fell out. Like it fell, boom! It hit the table. And, the, and it had oily in there. Yeah. But it looked like some guy said, what are you eating? And my sister is like, oh, it's just the sheep's testicle because it, <laughs> it's all wrinkled and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, but um, yeah. I had to turn down the heat, by the way. It's hot. Oh, so so my thermostat, it. oh, it's very hot. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw high, you off. You're all high, all high tech. tech. High tech. I'm not bragging amazing. or anything. So you don't have, I still slide yeah, the thing on old my school. house. Yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> oh my God. Frank, it's great to, to see you here. You, you came in from 
uh, Toronto, where yeah. you live. I've had a lot of people, a lot of comedians come in here, through here, a lot of them who are your friends uh, via Toronto. And you're here in Montreal. By the time this airs, later in the week, you will have done your show. So I'll be back. Amazing weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. listen, it, it's it's and it's great to be out. I know my wife's... I have to downplay it sometimes because my wife's like, oh, you get to leave and do things. I'm like, no, it's so, I'm, I'm concentrating, which I am. I, I get kind of obsessed over the show and you, you try to uh, think about what's going on and, and, and you get a little stressed. Or After the first show, it gets easier. Like, okay, I got this. But uh, I try to tell her like, oh yeah, it's boring and stuff. But I'll tell you, Frank, okay, and I get to hang out with you, which is great. Thanks. And we have a little bit of sketch. Yeah, we're drinking, uh, this is a... Well, I'm not yeah, getting paid to say this, but uh, Frank is special. Oh Honestly, I love thanks. Frank. So thanks, Frank, Frank got the McAllen. Oh, the other guests are going to say he never offered me that. I offer all drinks at the drive-by bar. This is McAllen 18. So this cheers. Is, and, and, and I got into scotch because of my brother-in-law, the Salute. Friulan guy. Salute. Uh, he loves scotch, and I appreciate this because this is fantastic. And I have to say, Frank is one of the earliest podcasts I've recorded here. So the fact that we're drinking at... Uh, Local time, one o'clock, is, <laughs> and Frank said yes to having a scotch. You know what? Amazing. I, how do you, you can't say no. It's an insult. You know what I mean? No. But you were saying, so it's nice to be here, peaceful, quiet. It's, it's just nice, it's to, it's do nice to take a break yeah. because during COVID, let's be honest, you have two sons, you yeah. have your mother, and you love your family, your wife. Yeah. I mean, it was just my wife and I here for mo for mostly, you know, the, the two years, minus a couple of people who came in and out, like my yeah. sister, my nieces, and my mom. It's not easy. Two years of hanging with the family and not having anywhere to go. <laughs> Zoom in on Frank. <laughs> you know, Frank, um, I love my family. Yeah. And I have to look into the camera <laughs> because I feel like I'm talking to them right now. We all love our, and it's weird because when we were busy working, we're like, can't I just be home? Can't I just be home? And then, and then you're home, but it's not the way you want to be home. You don't want to be stuck at home yeah. and not be able to go to restaurants and not be able to go out. And again, I love my family, but man, we got on each other's nerves. And my wife, I didn't realize how many different ways she could say my name. And depending <laughs> what mood she was in, it was like, Frank, 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 Frank. I'm like, yeah, is there, is there a duck in my house? Um, and uh, it just... It just it makes you realize how much you need that balance. Yes, you know what I mean. The work, you know, personal life balance. And I don't get like some people got pregnant and had kids. Um, there was no way. Like I and and then you hear the other stories where you people are getting divorced because a lot it, of people it, getting divorced. It, it yeah. got tough. It yeah, got, you can't be locked in with someone. I don't think for that long a period of time. But we did what we had to do to to try to keep things safe and 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 um, for the greater good, Frank. For the greater good. <laughs> And uh, but anyway, it's nice that things are open again. And you know, it's you know, I've, I've already done two shows, well, three, two nights of shows, and it's amazing because me and my buddy Angie, you, you had him on the podcast, Angela Tsarukas. Yeah, fantastic. It, it, your best friends, right? I one mean, of them, yeah, yeah. He's he's you know, when you start, you, you have your you have your friends outside of the of your of your comedy or your your business. Let's say outside of radio or outside of work. You have your friends you grew up with. Like, there's always that core. But then, starting comedy, you always have those couple guys or those few guys, that handful of comics that have. And I got to say, Ange is like, he's, he's stuck together. He's like, yeah, he's yeah. like family now. Like, he's been to my mom's house having Panzerati. Like, he gets jealous. My mom will make Panzos, and uh, I'll send him pictures. And I know he's he's on some cruise ship and sick of the food. And he's like, oh, you're you're killing me, Spadone. Yeah. Uh, he's a lover of life, and he, yeah. and obviously, he like all of food. us, we love food, and he really appreciates it. Explain to, to I want to get into this too, because, you know, you're from the same area, your parents are from the same area yeah. as my dad. My mom's That's from right. Northern Italy, Milano, my dad's from Bari, your mom, mom's, uh, mom and dad uh, as well, both, both Bari's, Bari your late father, yeah. and uh, it's just, a, and I think I could say this, because I'm half buddies. Uh, Bares, a little messed up. Yeah. First explain. <laughs> but in a good way. He's going to look at the camera again. It, but in it's, it's in a good way. Yeah. Like, we have our quirks. Like yeah. any A lot of quirks. More than I think. Yeah. I could say that. Like, my my buddies, this side of the family, including, I'm half buddies, it's borderline uh, neurotic, you know? like We it's, can uh, be neurotic. We're crazy. We have our ways yeah. of doing things. I yeah. think the North, what, the North's a little more. Snobby. Yeah, is it more North American? Would you say? You, you I want to say more North American. More, um, 
uh, what's the word? Più raffinat, you know, yeah, like a bit think, more culture. Yeah. They think at least. Okay, right? and here's like, the funny thing. But so, it's not. They're not that far off. But <laughs> and and really, the South, we're kind of like the Southern states. Correct. It right? is. Uh, it's Texas. The, Body is like the Texas yeah, of the worst. We're the red. China. Are we the red? Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. Um, <laughs> well, China because body the dialect. Well, the South dialect. Chinese, the yeah. dialect. It really it is sounds like, yeah. like a butcher. Mandarin or Cantonese. Yeah, yeah it's we'll it's 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 a crazy. It's a chmashu chmani. <laughs> um, it's here's a, here's a story. My brother-in-law's Friulan, the guy who loves the uh, Vic, Victor Gardiman. He's from the north, Gardiman, and uh, he loves his scotch. He loves his salami and polenta and his cheeses, uh, which probably is the reason he's got a little bit of you know pans. But he loves it. It's an investment, he says. And uh, pans. But he met my sister, who's a southerner, and talk about how. You know, you think Italians are okay with other Italians. His when when they met my sister, they were like, "Why are you bringing this Southerner around?" There was actually division within Italy, it's with true. The North and South. Oh yeah. And my brother-in-law's like, "I don't care. I love this girl. I'm gonna get married." But like, not to say anything wrong. That's just the way things. Yeah, especially were back, back in the day. Yeah, back yeah. in the day, they 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 didn't mix North and South. No. Either, which was which is which is you know crazy nowadays different races and cultures are getting married now but that's the division was there too and yep. and and maybe that's why maybe because his parents knew how what was the word you said neurotic <laughs> ne neurotic as are or this yeah out. neurotic neurotic we're kind of yeah. are we we like things a we're, certain way yeah is it stubbornness too like i think so i think it's a bit of and also like um i find it's because you know the, the small town mentality kind of creeps in right yeah. and and it's it's uh, we say in Italian it, it pesante. It's heavy. You it know, can be times? heavy, but yeah. I'll tell you something. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I can say it. I'm half buddies. Yeah, you're, you're full half, buddies. So we're full. three quarter in this room. And so. sometimes it can be pesante. Yeah, yeah, as we say it in our dialect. Yeah. But at the same time, it all comes from love, and it all comes from 100%. this is how we do it, and the, and this is how we know how to do it, and this is how we're gonna do it. Yeah. So the, yeah, that's where it comes from. But I think it. It always comes from a good place, I think, but yeah. from the outside, it looks a bit whatever. And listen, there's other places of Italy that people will say all oh, that, you know. There's there's the way people think of again the Northerners. Oh, they're 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 too cool, troppo yeah. class, yeah. and then senza class. <laughs> that I wrote a joke about that. Yeah, troppo class is senza class. You can't too much class without class. Yeah, you, you know, if if you do things too too right, you try to be right, then yeah. you're oh you're 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 too good for us. And then if you don't th do things enough, then oh you're not good enough for exactly. You know, the, the Italians never are never them. happy with never, each no. other. We're just very unhappy people. Yeah. For happy people yeah. who who are lovers of life and love the joie de vivre, we're really unhappy sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, but we, then we eat and we and have we're a happy few again. drinks and we're happy Couple again. Days. But it's really weird because I talked about this before too, you know, like Italians for having such a rich art culture, yeah, paintings, Leonardo da Vinci, all you know picasso picasso all this beautiful all the beautiful theater you know over the years the live theater and and stuff and music that comes out of italy san remo when a kid decides to get in the arts what are you doing oh yeah exactly no so you got read the oh, for, the riot act oh, from your yeah. dad too, saying like what you know what are you doing you yeah. should be driving a bus for the city you need <laughs> benefits <laughs> What do you mean? And I went even when I went to school to do photography. That was my first thing. Okay, so started. you started as a photographer, which I, I'm sure mentioning to your dad that you wanted to go into photography was insanity. Even like, what there, are you doing? he was like, "What yeah. are you going to do? You're going to shoot weddings every weekend?" And it's like, "No, I want to shoot ads. I want to yeah. try to see." Like I had big dreams. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you, it wasn't easy when you come from that background because they didn't know. It's not their fault. It's, it's their that fault, they yeah. didn't know. Yeah. They knew what they knew. And they were like, "What do you mean you're going to shoot TV ads and and or what or you know stuff that's in magazines?" Pa, well, you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, like, exactly. No, they, it's true. My dad told me the same yeah. thing. Yeah, they don't put. You know what my dad said? They don't put people like us on the radio. Take pick something else. So we went through, and we're we're pretty much uh, a year apart. So yeah. we went through this exact same thing. And then you think, like coming again, coming from that culture with such a rich art artistic. You would think they would promote that. Yeah. No, no, not my son. No, they want, but it, <laughs> but I understood because now what's weird is I'm I am the comedian guy, and my son said to me, my little guy, he's nine, and he's like, maybe I'll tell jokes, maybe like you, and I'm like. Oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> and now I'm doing the same thing. So I know where it comes from. It comes yeah. from you, you, you want to give your kid 
a good life without this, you know, almost safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, they knew just do what's going to make you money and give you benefits because exactly. it's hard out there. It is hard out there. It is more than ever now. And I think that's where it comes from. But when did you notice that? Because for me, it was a very young age. And when did you notice that your parents were different, right? Being Canadian <laughs> yeah. and being around Canadian kids in school, even though I'm sure there were a lot of Italians in your area too, I noticed pretty quick at a young age, my parents just, uh, they, they walked down a different street, right? With Not only with the sandwiches and all that, but I think yeah. part of your stand-up you were mentioning when, was it when you and your dad were going through a drive through Was that it? Was yeah, it? yeah, in the McDonald's and... Um you know, I'm sure a lot of ethnic kids have gone through this where when you're, it's, I was gonna, when you were talking about, I was like, it's when they had to speak, like whether they went to school and parent teacher night. Okay, so it's okay. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, your son, this, that. He's like, okay, the market's good. Like, he, and the thing is, they didn't, like, I come home, where's your homework? Where's this? My parents never did that with me, but it was the, the drive through was an example. You know, we'd go through the drive through. And for the most part, my my dad would get us to call the gas company or whatever if he didn't know just tell him this this and that yeah but then because of the drive to and he was the driver he decided to go for it and every now and then okay give me two big mac combination one hamburger <laughs> cheese you know and then he'd think two apple pine <laughs> two call it apple pine say that again apple app pine it's apple pine apple pine yeah. and one a sunday night <laughs> and uh <laughs> And they would always ask for the nuts, and he didn't like peanuts and no peanuts and no peanuts. No. And then you go, what do you want to drink? You yeah. know, give me two brio, they yeah. say, or give me two ginger ale. And the thing is, and this is not a diss towards them, but I went through the exact same thing. My dad always liked weird for for a guy who was from Bari, Southern Italy. He liked McDonald's every now and then. He'd he pull did up, eh? every six months, six seven months. He, he would do it. Frank, uh, let's, like, let's go to McDonald's, right? Just a cleansing. Just of the, a cle I think that's, that's what, what it was. Said, like, he cleansed them. <laughs> But he's, he was, you know, he was their innocence, right, of, of let's say, being in a, in a drive through and all that. That's, that's, that's who they were. That's, yeah. that's all they knew, right, this was their language. So, in a way, I was never embarrassed. But yeah. sometimes as a kid, again, you don't know as a kid saying, why does my dad have to sound, it's embarrassing, right? It's, it's, it, yeah. But at the same time, you, you realized when you were young, it was embarrassing because that's how you react as a kid. As time went on, you realized how special it was, and then yeah. you realized, oh, no, this is okay, because we had our insecurities as kids, right? Yeah. Well, for sure. Uh, but I, I know what you're saying, but at the same time, you did, like, see how special it was. It and, was special, and, and but it honest, wasn't special at the time. It was like at, at the time, you were like, yeah. But he, the funny thing is, is I always, and, and not to laugh at my dad, but I always had fun with it. Yeah. And, and, People would, it's funny, I think I was imitating my dad very young, like just when he did something, I would repeat it at school. And I remember one girl, I forget her last name, but it was Linda. She was like, repeat what your dad said again. I think I had it in me back then about like just, I, I was fascinated with people's character and, I, and it wasn't to, to put them down, but I just realized we were all different. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and my dad was a different character and, uh, yeah, I know. There were times where I'm like, he's, he's he doesn't get it when the teacher's exactly, talking. When yeah. the teacher's talking, he's which he's is probably a, good in a way because it was he didn't good. understand he everything. Didn't understand <laughs> when I was, and it was weird. I was a good student yeah. for a week, but then be, I don't know why my parents did this. They put me in public school, but we were Catholic, so on Saturdays I had to go to catechism classes, right. and I hated it. I was in school all week. I mean, this is my weekend, yeah. and I would act up. I was the great kid during the week and just like a pain in the ass so you were public monday to friday and then catholic, catholic on saturday school so i was monday to friday catholic school and saturday italian school oh every yeah. saturday so see they get you for six days because yeah, you're not gonna you be for yeah. six because they're working half a day on saturday yeah, exactly. that was my dad my dad he'd always come home with those fresh paninos though i i loved it saturday yeah. was panino and mortadella and and salami day it was, it was 
fantastic. So you you started in photography, then you yeah. realized I think it, it was the nineteen or well, the late. You're like Frank, nineteen hundreds. It was the nineteen nineties, <laughs> the late nineties, where you figured out that you had a knack for making people laugh, and that's when you you got into comedy. Yeah, I, I was working with photographers, and we were shooting ads, exactly yeah. what I wanted to get into. And fashion, I was working with Dan Lim, uh, Robert Lear, great, uh, you know, on figure was Dan Lim. Like we'd shoot for Tip Top Tailors. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, of course. They were around Fairweather, and mostly yeah. we did a lot of guy stuff. And then Rob Robert Lear did uh, Bob's. I call him great, great guy. He would do the off figure like stuff that's on mannequins and then you know you see them in the store hey mm. uh i loved it we shot cars with shin shigino and stuff like that uh i worked with like some of the best photographers but then i would always i kept getting hired because i was i was fun i, I was a big guy carried carried the lights i was frank the chooch you know the mule <laughs> they called me the mule <laughs> I like uh, that name, Frank the Chooch. Frank the Chooch. I carried everything and uh, I knew how to set up lights. I was I was a good worker, and and but it was up and down. And but people said, "Hey, Frank, is Frank going to be on the shoot? Because he's a lot of fun to be with." And I just and then I met an art director that did some stand up, and um, uh, Scott McMahon, who's actually out of Ottawa, and um, he said, "Oh, uh, you know, if you want, there's a place called the Laugh Resort." He you know wrote the number down for me, and I called a few times, and I. Uh, I just, I finally did an amateur night. I shit my pants. I did the caca. It's scary. Yeah, it's scary. And I'll tell you something. When it's an important show, it's still scary. I know Jerry Lewis used to say. 100%. Jerry Lewis used to say before every telethon that he would throw up. And if he didn't throw up, he knew something was wrong. When Correct. You, when you care enough about something. 100%. You do. You feel that performance anxiety. Yeah. If people say, do you still get nervous? <clears throat> Sorry, I think I need more. No. More <laughs> No, no. Actually, maybe water. Uh, <laughs> But um, I know I'm getting. Anthony, are you okay poured. with the uh, the scotch in there? Anthony, you okay? Anthony's in there. Anthony, by the way, my producer who showed up on episode one hasn't been here for uh, eighteen episodes. Well, I already have some quality control issues. A, <laughs> a, the water's too far away, and uh, B, Picasso was an I, Italian; he was Spanish. Oh, I, that was, oh, you're right. Yeah, <coughs> that was embarrassing. That's right? why I'm here. Okay, da Vinci. Fine. Who was yeah. the other? Who was the other? Uh, Michelangelo. Michelangelo. Yeah. Oh, that's my God. it. But why didn't you try all the Ninja in? Turtles? Why didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> we were too busy yeah, watching why didn't you other chime things. In? I yeah, chime in, this. man. You're, you have to be part of it. All right. Well, I. You mentioned the McDonald's stuff. It's as an Italian growing up as well. It all rings true, man. Yeah, it all rings true. I got Frank some uh, bachi, so we're gonna do some bachi readings at some point. Um, Frank, I wanted to ask you. Um, so you're you're from you always lived in Toronto, mm -hmm. and you love coming to Montreal. I Montreal do. is a great city. Yeah. But you notice there's a difference on many levels between Toronto and Montreal, right? On, of course. On, when it comes to so many, even sense of humor, when it comes to how people act, women, men, like we're yeah. different. Italians too. Did you notice a difference between our culture here and, and your culture there? I think you're still, I think Montreal's a little more Italian. Yeah. Like hanging on to the. For dear life. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> and, and, is Toronto Milano? Like we're trying to be more. I I I, I don't even think it's. Listen, there's still very Italian -y people in Toronto as well. Yeah. I just think. I don't know. I think here maybe because of the French, you're allowed to be more Italian here, which is great because when I come here, I feel like it, it almost feels more like I've gone back. Not and I don't mean this in a bad way. No, no. Like. When I grew up, that's how we were the, more it's like. It's still like that, yeah. And and it's still, ways. which is great. It almost feels like when I was a kid with my cousins, yeah. who it was. It's more Italian here, and then you know all the Italian shops and the bakeries. And then listen, it's still like that in Toronto, but yeah. it's. I think Toronto, everyone's spread out now. There's not that. I don't know what it's like here because you live here, but. Well, here the East End is still, is still. There's still a lot of Italians. A lot moved to Laval, and I know in Toronto it's. Uh, Maple and Woodbridge and yeah. what's the other place that there's a lot of Italians so I, I, that's know, pretty much those two areas Maple and Woodbridge are big well and then a lot moved even further north they started selling their mansions in uh, Woodbridge and, and Bradford some people okay. there's a lot of Portuguese in yeah. Bradford too I mean I live in Richmond Hill there was a lot of Italians there too yeah. at one point and you know everyone just keeps migrating north yeah. wherever the houses are cheaper and then they wait for the value <laughs> and they keep we're gonna end up in uh Nunavut uh pretty soon Thunder no, Bay. no we're gonna have to change it to Nunavut or no Nunavut <laughs> Nunavut <de Nund. laughs> that's what I call it Nunavut you can't see it um <laughs> See, he gets it because he's badass. Yeah. Um, but you really speak the uh, 
the Bares with your mom because my mom is Milanese. I haven't spoken Bares since, you know, my aunt died a few years ago, my dad's sister, and my dad passed away 15 years ago. So you really speak, like I see you and your mom making the Panzerot, you know, in uh, Panzerotti in, on your IG videos, and you're like, you're full on. Like it's, it's like my grandmother, yeah. And my, my dad. I listen to you guys. Goes like, off. And I understand the whole thing. Yeah. A switch goes off and I'm speaking pure Bares or Trijanes, which is the, the hometown. And uh, I love it, uh, you know, because after I lost my dad, I'm like, okay, everything my mom, I'm just going to be full on, like, we'll talk to her in the dialect. I was l always like that with her anyway. But anything, you know, I always try to watch what I eat and stuff. I, well, <laughs> to a, you know frank to a degree but uh anything she makes i'm gonna eat it because yeah. i saw how quick my dad like in a matter of months he was gone and i don't know my mom's 81 now now for all i know she's got my grandmother's genes and she'll live till 93 but at some point she won't be able to make the things, things that she made yeah. you know even making the even making the brajol i'll tell you something I try so hard to come up with creative stuff. So brajol for people for... Brajol is like a meat roll. Yeah. You take... With a toothpick in With it. a toothpick yeah. or back in the day, they would use a string. Oh, that was, that's they, classic, yeah. And they... They put the string in their mouth. They'd suck it up because, listen, they had no <laughs> money. They'd suck every bit of sauce and, and meat yeah. off of that thing, yeah. wash it because they didn't have a lot of cash, wash it, let it dry, and use it again after someone already basically ate and flossed their teeth at the same time with it <laughs> reuse that piece of that's how bad yeah. things were back then no, and, that, true, and that's right. why they hung on and i you know uh but br that's what so Brajol right. is so I, yeah. i'll try hard frank to come up with funny skits put some of my old stand-up you know frank stuff that you want people to see that you're like it's it's and i'll, I'll tell you something about s social media which is great in one way because it promotes you but then at some point, you got to give up some of your material, right? And 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 you there's a there's a fine balance between giving up your stuff. Uh, you don't want to give away your whole show and hanging on to some stuff, but you put stuff up there. And I'll tell you something: I get some decent hits off of the stuff I put. But I'll put my mother rolling a piece it's of meat with parmesan, yeah. and and and, and the views are double. Isn't that crazy? I'm like. Who, Who's the star here? Yeah. My mom's it, hands doing this <laughs> to some Italian music in the background, rolling it, sticking a toothpick. People were texting me, can you tell me the type of meat? What did she order? I got more action off my mother doing stuff. And and I'm like, yeah. It's like, unbelievable. I did the same thing during the COVID. My mom was making uh, you know different recipes and trying different things. Yeah. The minute I put her on, well, there's two things. I put my mom on or I put my wife on yeah. and the views double, literally right they and have it, magic it's crazy it's but the, especially seeing somebody do the you know the the old recipes from the old country and seeing that people want that right they want to get the rest oh, yeah. they want to make it because there's nothing more authentic like you said once that generation is no longer with us oh, they yeah. take all that with them and so you better learn how to do yeah, it now and no and i think i should document more stuff yeah uh, because i'll tell you people were even asking and people were even making suggestions not just asking how my mom did it and they're like hey do you ever put mortadella in it and people do my mom's like yeah but i never wanted it like people will put a a slice of prosciutto or something in the brajol. Yes. So you like I'm like wow that sounds pretty good I've, too. Yeah, I've seen that. Even though my I grandmother. Have, even though you know Frank, me and me and prosciutto have a weird relationship because um, I like it, but then I don't. If it's a day out of the, it doesn't agree with it, you. Or? Yeah, I, the taste, the salt. Okay. I don't know what happens. Well, it depends. It has to be of, freshly cut, and I don't want to sound like a prima no, donna. No, but it, you could be a prima donna, especially when you know you're Italian and you could say it. Well, you could say it. anybody could say it, but <laughs> but there are, there are better prosciuttos that when you get yeah. them, it's like you know. To me, if I'm gonna cheat, yeah. which I haven't, but the next time I go to Italy, I might, guys. Sorry to tell you, I don't mean on my wife. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, have some meat because I don't eat meat. I would, you know, that's where I would do it. But you're right. If you have some prosciuttos, it doesn't have the same. You don't. You, know, have, you don't eat meat. No, I don't eat meat, and that's crazy. <laughs> No, it's okay. I eat fish, though. It's okay. And oh, thank you God, fish. you know, my dad uh, is from Bari because we have a lot of great seafood plates in oh, Bari. So thank God. That, that saved me being pescatarian yeah. because when we started this whole cockamania idea of being vegan, yeah. which is way before COVID, it lasted about a year. Then I went vegetarian. And vegetarian's cool. I'm okay with that. But yeah. like more than that. But look, 
What the? Um, I was wondering why there was no bacon. With what the, the <laughs> La pancette. La pancette. But when when COVID happened, it made me realize a whole bunch of things. I don't need to answer to anybody, right? Because yeah. during the pandemic, you did what you thought was right for yeah. you. I yeah. did what I thought was right for me. We did what was right for the greater good, some of us more than others. But I realized, if I want to have a piece of meat, I'm going to have it. And no one's yeah. going to judge me about That's it. Right. But I still feel the way I feel about animals. I still feel the way I yeah. feel about my health. Yeah. But if I feel like... You know, maybe Frank uh, made some prosciutto, some uh, soppressat. You might I'll, try it. You never know. I haven't yet, but in a few years. But but it, but you shouldn't have to answer if you don't want to have it exactly. either, right? That's the thing. And, and and listen, and that's the thing. This whole thing has been crazy because, and again, and social media has a lot to do with it. Everybody judging everybody and, and everybody scrapping. You know, now we're going to go a whole other, as if Italian families didn't scrap. Look, I used to, I have jokes in my repertoire. About, about COVID? No, no, about going to Italy. Okay. Okay, so this is how it's going to relate in, okay. a, in a weird way. And I try to stay off touchy subjects. I try to play No it COVID in safe. your stand-up. There is Some, about what we went through, but okay. it's like, okay, so here's a joke. My no. wife, she was getting, she was getting a lot of the conspiracy stuff you know, the emails from people and then the algorithm started going nuts and she was getting a lot of the same so, stuff, yeah. right? So she, at one point, we talked about this, she's like, you know, JFK Jr. is still alive. And I'm like, he is? <laughs> I thought his plane went down. And then she's like, oh no, he's coming back. He's she coming really believed back. It? And she was excited. Oh, look at his picture. I'm like, hey, he ain't coming back for you. Take it easy, you know what I mean? She started doing her hair. Um, but uh, no, but then, you know, even in Italy, you go to Italy thinking, Okay, now this is how, I don't know if it relates 100%, but you go to Italy and you, you go to hang out with someone and then you're like, well, this person's not talking to that person and that person's mad at that person about this. And there's, you know, and meanwhile, when was it? When I came to do Just for Laughs and I think it was 2010 I, 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 or nine, I recorded something that was supposed to be more Italian. I'm like, hey, Italy just celebrated a, 150 years of unification. And I go, but nobody in Italy talks to each other. It's so <laughs> weird. And... Uh, I know some a lot of it's family stuff, but but when it came to all this, like in now what's happened in the world in the last two years, I just I think the thing that and and comedy brings everybody together, like it should, it should, and and but now it's harder. That's to another do. thing. Now we're going to talk story, about yeah. that too. Yeah. Comedy's getting harder. Yeah, you know we went the Italian route in the beginning. Uh, it's going to get like maybe a little more serious with the. Uh, with the conversation, but, and I'll tell you what I appreciate, doing a couple of shows already in Montreal, people actually are thanking me. After the show, they wanna say hi, and they're like, I just wanna thank you. I'm like, for what? You and Angelo Tsaroukas, my good buddy, going live. On Instagram. On yeah. Instagram, and I know you went through the same thing. Yeah. We talked about this. People said you were a lifeline, and honestly, it brings tears to my eyes. People were so down in the dumps about being at home, and again, we did what we had to do, but, it was tough. It was tough for us as performers who like to make people feel good. It was tough for people at home not being able to, like, it touches me when they say, you guys saved me during the, during the pandemic. It, it, and it, it, we weren't, we were just talking. Yep. We were actually, we started off like, let's just go live and, and talk about, because we were getting angry and we, or we were sad. And, we, and I think people are like, oh, it's not just me. Frank's going through it. Angel's going through it. And then you start reading the comments. Yeah. Everybody. I, everyone started saying, yeah. oh, I'm, uh, when is this going to end? How's everybody doing? You know, do you have toilet paper? Whatever the topic yeah. was at the time everybody was worried about. So um, th that's when everyone came together. But I've seen this weird shift lately, well, the last few months, maybe starting last year, where everyone's so segregated now you have like this segregation and 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 one of my friends said this he's like we i feel like we're living in the states now you know left right blue red republican democrat yeah it never felt like that prior to the pandemic here in canada but now it does right it really does feel exactly like america you're either on one side or the other yeah. and there's no in between it feels that way at least and 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 i always say it when me and Ange go live that's what's beautiful about stand-up is I don't know what your beliefs are and it's none of my business and you you do what you want in your life and what what you feels right and what makes you feel safe and 
I don't care. We're all from different cultures. We're all different colors, different sexuality. We don't have to tell you. Do what you want. It's your life. Hey, what happened to some discreetness? You know what I mean? But I'm up there. Come along on my ride. I'll tell you about my story, like being a stand-up comic and everyone laughing together. That's what I missed. And that's one thing that was very vivid with me with stand-up is we're all from different places and different beliefs, but you're in a room laughing together. There's an energy and a vibration that happens. And um, uh, how do I look? I look okay. Well, have you ever <laughs> seen me looking over to the camera? Is I just it, want to make sure to it's, make still, sure it's I'm still recording because that. my producer's far across the room. You can't even see it. He's binoculars. But there's something, you see, and, and look at us. When you're with people, what happens? You have a drink, you eat. This was amazing, by the way, so far. And it's not over, but I mean, yeah. just eating, having breakfast with you this morning. Don't you feel like life is back? Yes. Yeah. And, th and this is what we need. And as much as, again, we had to stay apart from each other because of safety reasons or whatever, um, why do I, f I feel so healthy with this? You know what I mean? The last night, everyone's in a room. I don't know where they come from. I saw people with different skin tones, people probably different cultures, different religious b b beliefs, whatever, and everybody's in a good mood. We're all vibing. Imagine if the world was like that. Imagine if, and it's hard to say, because I know I'm, I'm, you know, someone said to me, Frank, you're thinking about heaven. And I'm like, I wish we could have heaven on earth. I know maybe I sound a little sappy right now and corny, but there's just so much ah anger and sadness in the why does it have to be like that? You know, like we're all worried all the time. And listen, we're the worst Italians. We worry so much. I do a whole joke about my my wife's That's all we do is worry. Yeah, yeah, my wife's grandmother, she was simple. Eat, take care of the kids, have a little bit of things in the garden. And she lived till 97. And I, do, I don't want to give it away because it's a newer joke. Well, I mean, some of you might have heard it. But <laughs> she lived... By the way, you can do all your material. Yeah, it I doesn't know, matter. You, I know. I, I'd love Run to. Run it here. <laughs> <laughs> and, but she didn't worry about anything. No. And that's why I think she lived till 97. It was simple. We eat. We get together. We have a good time. You go to work to pay for things. You know, and then there's that whole idea like Italians are like that. This is what I admire about Italians. They don't... They, what is it? Live... They live, they don't live to work, they work to live. Mm -hmm. So they work enough to pay their, but you know, Italians live more simple in Italy, I think. They have their mm -hmm. apartments, their whatever. We want, they are, yeah. We want the huge houses, we want the Mercedes in the driveway. When they come here, they're like, what's they're like, going oh, on? Yeah. Cats. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they're like, that's <laughs> why. <laughs> nodding, yes. And that's why when they come here, they don't pull their wallets out. They don't think they have to. Yeah. Uh, because no, but I, you know what? A whole my, joke, which, but, <laughs> which is fine. We like to uh, ho uh, be hospitable. But my my um, my Italian family in Milano, they're very generous. They really are. They're very cool people, and they're very, I'm not saying that from the south they're not, but it's just a different breed, right? It's just like yeah. And I gotta say something. Yeah. My family in 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 body. Whenever I went, they take care of you. They take care of me. I'm just I'm joking. Like, and people stop. When a comic does something, it's a sliver of something that caught their eye that they thought was a little bit funny. If you don't think it's funny, that's fine. Other people might. Let them go with it. You don't have to write, you're this, you're that, cancel. It, it's people so, are very sensitive nowadays, more than ever, Frank. Frank. it makes me, honestly, and, and, and if it wasn't for the people, honestly, and I'm going to say thanks to the people this weekend that have come up to me and said thanks to me because not just me, but some other comics have almost quit. Um, many have. I many have. That, yeah. Well, me and Ange do our lives on Monday on yeah. Instagram, and and um, and I worked with Lisa, but she didn't recognize me. It's okay. Lisa quit. Forget? Lisa Lampanelli yeah, quit. quit yeah. And I know she had a, a uh, something happen to her maybe too, but it's it's not because of just her, it's the business. The business can drive you, and, and it's even worse now. It's cutthroat. It's, uh, but it's, it's so hard. People are, look at what happened. Okay, now we're going to talk about the whole, uh, you know, Chris, Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Will Smith. Bill, Bill Mayer. Bill Mayer, yeah. Is that, did I say yeah. his name right? I screw up. Um, <laughs> he does a great thing. He did a great thing. If you go on his Instagram, uh, Comedy for Dummies. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to further explain. There is, when you go on a show like that, other people on the, on the Academy Awards got roasted a little bit, right? Yeah, that, well that's, 
that's, that's sort what of it's part about. of it. Right, now, of it. I don't want to, ju- I know, now, this is where we get, I don't know if he knew she had alopecia. I think what he was just saying, you look great, you could do the next movie. Maybe that's what he was trying to say. I, don't I know thought if, it was funny. Yeah, and, and I don't know if he knew or not, right? And, and, and it all depends where it's coming from. But if you were to go back, and again, because me and Frank have a good, you know, we're 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 paisans here, and we talk uh, off camera. <laughs> if you were to go back to the Dean Martin roasts, oh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Frank Martin. Sinatra, who's the other the drunk Red Skelton, or yeah. the Don Rickles back in the Sammy day. Davis Jr. Junior. Do you know w- how ripped he got? Yeah, and and uh, even about skin color and about everything, they were they wouldn't last two minutes. No, two seconds. Two seconds. No. Their careers would have been over. Don Rickles, yeah, you said, even in Vegas, he was making fun of r- different races. And and, like, and it was always w- within the context of comedy. So yes. in other words, it was funny. It was like all in the family, right? Carol O'Connor, yeah. Gene Stapleton. A lot of inappropriate jokes made during that time, but it was just Norman Lear was a, a genius, and it was a fantastic show. But today... Would it everything fly, would be, but it was ahead. Fly. I, I, I would was think a, All in the Family with, uh, what's his name? Who was the main character? Archie, Archie Bunker. Bunker. Yeah. Would he, people wouldn't accept that today. Zero chance. But what people fail to realize is he realized what a bigot he was at times. And that's what, what, it, what and it was that's about. that's what the show yeah. was about. Correct. Him needing to see himself yeah. and change. Yeah. And, but... What do people see? Oh, well, he said that word, or he treats him different because of whatever. What wow, they, geez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Archie. <laughs> and, and all that. They fail to, to see how he, he sometimes transformed. Or he learned. did evolve, yeah. He evolved. His character evolved. And that's, I think, what the show was about. That's what it was that, about. That's what it was about. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, I'm telling you, like, it's so hard. Comedy is is tough, and and if you see something and you like it and you want to laugh, and then it's just just too much judgment now. It, there's too much seriousness. Comedy's not supposed to be serious, as serious. Uh, uh, I know there are lines sometimes that are on the edge of of getting over it, but comedy's always been like that. Listen, there's insult comedy. There's dark. Don't look at a guy like me. There's comics out there. They're dark. They talk about stuff that, but there is an audience for that. Jimmy Carr, for example, like I he find Jimmy be, brilliant, he's, but he's, he's brilliant. On the, he's on the verge of being canceled he's, because yeah, of some a of the big things joke he's that said. he made. A big joke. Uh, some would say the most inappropriate joke ever made. A couple of what was it a month ago or something? Okay, like that? And, I but, haven't heard this. This is where I see. Yeah, I'm not even going down that road. It was, but it okay. was. Uh, it's everywhere, of course. When you, but okay, but let's. And I met it. Jimmy, and he's br- he's brilliant, and he All is these, such a nice guy. He's a great guy. All, but even the, I met the uh, uh, Gilbert. Yeah, he was a great guy. But he, Artie Lang, great guy. Artie Lang and Frank Spadone. He's okay. Great guy. <laughs> I'm. You know what's funny is I. I, I feel bad for comedians because there's some there's some brilliant comedians and sometimes I look up to them because they push the envelope. And sometimes I, I'll play it safe. Like, I mean, I'm more, I talk about my experiences and stuff. But, but. you have a different style. It's like I was having this yeah. conver- conversation with uh, Guido Cocomelo. Yeah. You just have a different style. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't offend, you could still offend people within your oh, style. Oh, yeah. But it's a different style of comedy. Sometimes I offend my own. Like yeah. I, when I You're feel, obs- observational too, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm observational. And, you know, back in the day, I remember doing uh, comedy for, um, uh, it was for a school, but it was parents. And uh, it w- it was there were no kids there. It was like a fundraiser, and they decided to hire me. And I t- and it was it's an old joke about me being an accident and the plastic on the couch. Oh, how, you too? How, yeah, <laughs> and how and that and that's what makes a joke funny, right? It's because other people went through it too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one lady said she got offended just by me mentioning accident. The pla- no, the plastic on the couch. We don't do that anymore. She felt like it was beneath us, beneath. We've evolved from that sort of thing. I'm like, I'm telling you something that happened to me then. I'm not saying that's what you do now, and I don't even know you. Yeah. I'm telling you a story of how it was an accident. It was made to for My dad had a couple of drinks. Firecrackers were going off, and uh, <laughs> so was he. 
he was <laughs> some sport rats. Yeah. Oh my god. No, and, and Baris, don't you say he peered? He peered. What is oh, he peered at his yeah. uh, he he he, yeah. He, he, yeah, that's farts. farts he yeah. was doing something else uh, other stuff, with yeah. my wall because that's how I came along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but and I related it to you know well my dad's like you know when he got mad at me he would say you know Frank you know supposed to be here I make him it's an old joke yeah you know, I make a mistake I go well what do you mean you make a mistake you got plastic everywhere else in this house what were you thinking over here you know you have it everywhere else and that's the joke and then but she got she offended, offended about the plastic on the couch I'm like but that's I'm talking about something that happened to me yeah here's another example I have a joke about getting a my wife said we have two kids. That's enough. Go fix you it. You got a vasectomy. Yes. Does that scare you the way I said it? <laughs> I still get chills, buddy. Did it? Was it painful? Okay, no, but the but thought of it. It's a thought. The thought of what of they someone, do. Yeah. yeah. So I do it again. Because you could do. Sh and, and then she. <laughs> well, I did it. I did it professionally because if I didn't do it professionally, she would have did it one night. Yeah. That's it, Frangis. She's got calabres in her eh? so she's got a she knife in her the pocket. Snippet. Yeah. Thank God she's not Sicilian. She really would have stabbed me. Yep. <laughs> anyway, are you? No, you're a brute says. Just a joke. These are jokes, everybody. Yeah. I'm Sicilian and I don't have a knife. We get it. We get it. Um, but I was talking about getting a vasectomy. Is that I say it right? Vasectomy. I, I yeah. say vasectomine sometimes. Yeah. I don't know why. I got a vasectomine because it was mean. But we me. did that as Italians. We always changed English we words. We did the ending. We kind of heard them, you know. Like. But that is now okay. We got to. Okay, get back to the vasectomy. Okay, okay, because I'm going to talk about vasectomine. I did my vasectomine, <laughs> and I was talking about it on stage, and some lady just yells out, "And here we go! This is the people the that are, are entitled to say stuff." I'm telling a joke. If you want to say something about it, tell me after I'm done. Right. She interrupts. You don't like, obviously, uh, some people, they'll go with the hecklers, depending on what and they And I will, too. You will, too. You, I you'll will, adjust too. Them, but it's not, it's not fun as a comic, right? It throws you off a bit? Yes, oh. I'll, but not always. I'll tell you what. For the most part, you could say shit. I, I want to tell my story. When I'm in the middle of it, I want to say it. You know what I mean? You know when you're, okay, when you're with your family and you keep wanting to make a point and no one lets you finish? Yeah. When that starts happening on stage, kind of like this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> but at least this is a conversation. Sorry, so for that's a, no, no, no. Um, um, <laughs> there's timing. Yes, like you know how they say comedy's timing. If you're gonna heckle, do, be a good heckler. Yeah, talk when there's a pause. Talk. Um, this lady just all of a sudden says to me, "You wimp." in the middle of the story and i'm like okay that's fine i go how come uh you know i i i don't know what i said i made the crowd laugh i go yeah i am because I, I was i was complaining about getting a vasectomy but i still did it that's the so I, I i'm i'm trying to tell this joke she goes whatever you're such a pussy and now you can hear the crowd is Ooh, like oh yeah, no, like, no it wasn't like, even a new it was like it's oh, disgusting like shut up yeah. they were telling her because yeah. now they've paid to see me and I get it. Comedy's live and shit's going to happen. And believe me, I've had people talk during, you know, especially when it's, um, you know, comedy clubs. You get it and you go with it. Especially in the comedy clubs. Like when yeah. you're doing just for laughs, that just doesn't happen. Big yeah. theaters. T uh, TV's going on. You know to be yeah. respectful. Let the yeah. person but finish their story. Small comedy clubs, it small happens clubs, a lot it more happens. often. Yeah. yeah, and it's okay. If it's done, mm -hmm. like if people say something. I've had people say brilliant stuff it at the right them. time. Mm -hmm. And it's great. And it's great. I actually appreciate it when it's, and I'm not saying start doing that after my show. <laughs> uh, I don't want people to start practicing at my, you know. No, no. Go to amateur night first. Exactly. Practice at amateur yeah. night, your timing of heckling, yeah, and exactly. then go to the pro shows. <laughs> um, this lady just starts saying, you know, you're a wimp. You know, giving birth is a lot more painful than your thing. And I'm like, yeah. Um, I'm not debating. This isn't, if I wanted to debate, I just feel like, you know, with social media, I feel like they should have beer league debate leagues because people just want to argue these days. No matter what you write, they're, they're there, right? They're there to, yeah. to, to, get, to play devil's advocate, even yeah. if they don't believe it. I'm so. pretty lucky. Like, yeah. comics, you put your stuff up. You always get the one person like, that's not how we did it, and good for you, you know, whatever. But this, And I said to this lady, I'm not debating that. I'm not talking about that me getting this was worse than my wife. I did this because... I can't talk to you about being pregnant. 
That's what stand-up is. I have an experience. It could be sad. It could be funny at the time. It could be, I could be angry. But days, weeks, months will go by, and I'm like, oh, I found, now that I'm a, a detached from it a little bit, I could find a funny angle on it now. Oh, shit, that's a funny way of telling that story of what I, what I experienced. Let me say it. This, and, and, you know, I, I mean, but I didn't take that long to say yeah. this. But I said, listen, the only thing I could s talk to you about is my experiences. I go, I'm, I, the only thing, I, I can't tell you about the time I was pregnant because it's physically impossible for me to be pregnant. Don't say that, Frank. I know. <laughs> now we're going to talk about something else. Um, Part two. Something about this. Um, but, uh, yeah. And I said, I went to go get a vasectomy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife doesn't have to go through the most painful thing in the world. Like we have, you know, and, and that's where people got to, you know, take it easy when it comes to comedy. Yeah. You know we, what I mean? We're living in sensitive times more than ever. And on the comedy stage, we've seen proof of it on big stages like the Oscars that people are really, truly losing their minds, right? When you see will smith an established actor about to win it's his night it's yeah. his biggest night of his life about to win best actor award or at least he he didn't know yet but you know this but could be the very, night this yeah evident was, that he yeah. might win it yeah getting up to protect his wife for whatever reason he did it completely inappropriate in my opinion to walk up and slap a fellow um being a comedian that is uh, now we're in the danger zone right yeah. i mean frank I, I said the same thing with uh, Guido. I'm not sure if it had happened before Angela. No, Angela was here before, but we talked about it. This is this is not a good precedent for for comedy. When you have Chris Rock up there, do it right. I mean, there's got to be a legend too. Eh? Like, he's a he's complete a, legend. He's so res respect respected. Yeah, he's like a pioneer of comedy, and even for the culture, right? Like he was one of the guys. Is there a part of you when you see that? Now, when you go do stand up, that's back of your mind thinking, could some maniac here take, you know, what you said about the vas vasectomy the wrong way and come up and do? Well, that it must lady, have crossed your mind. Yeah. You know, that lady, now, mind you, as you could see, Frank, I work out. I, yep. um, yep, you look, I you look great. Four pancakes. <laughs> Six. Six. You're right. Not that I'm counting. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of a bit. Now, someone made a joke. Now, here's the thing as a comedian, as a comedian, I instantly defend the comedian when it comes and i i'm all for defending your family too like i i get i get i listen i get i get him feeling for his wife wait for the commercial go backstage and say i don't like what you said but again other people got spritzed as bill mar mayor mahar mar <laughs> <laughs> I, I did on purpose. <laughs> what he said, it's it's a technique. He, go back to the roast. Listen, and it's happening today. S there's a, a major television station in Canada that has Battle Roast Canada. Mm -hmm. My friend Russell's on it. You are roasting somebody. You are making fun of them in every way. Possible. Possible. Appearance. Anything. It's a thing. And And, you know... It's sad. I know. Maybe she was going through stuff, and he felt like, and he was laughing at first, like people say. And then you look. Maybe it was. It was just. It's too bad because I think he dealt with it wrong. But I immediately defend the, the comic because that's what I do. It's hard not to defend the comic, you know. And I, and I know that's your domain. But I saw that, and I was just blow. I just couldn't believe what I was watching. But then again, this is the world we we live in now. We were talking about it during breakfast an hour ago. You know, we live, there's this woke mob and they're everywhere and they've infiltrated every part of the world, including Hollywood. I mean, look at uh, Dave Chappelle, right? You got a guy like Dave Chappelle, one of the, uh, in my opinion, the genius of comedy right now. And look at, yeah. he said so many He's things so that are all so good and so pro-trans, right? But yeah. he makes the joke. And then even when he ends that joke, talks about that per, the yeah. trans person. Yeah. He did it so beautifully. Yeah. It doesn't matter because what came before was yeah. inappropriate to this mob. And now he's on, you know, like everybody else, on the verge of being canceled because of his material. And he's I'm, brilliant, man. He's like, it's sad I, to me to see where this, and it's only getting worse. I'm telling people out there right now that are listening. Here's Frank, the message. <laughs> you're going to lose comedians. You're going to lose this art form. And then you're, you're, you're you're gonna lose a stand up sometimes.
tells the truth of 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 and it, not not that it's it, it's honest it's honest sometimes we talk there's some brilliant political comedians out there that talk about what's happening in the world uh and Car- bill maher's one of them bill maher's one of no. them carlin and he refers if carlin was was alive today george he was amazing he was amazing and his his thing was i want to go do colleges because they're the only people who have the open mind to understand he went from this clean sort of tv comic to he grew his hair and his beard out and said screw this and go look at carlin's stuff fantastic he talks about government and 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 stuff that makes you think yeah like listen one thing my dad said he goes uh money makes people do crazy stuff like and we're talking the government whatever yeah uh they're they're not worried about uh they don't he always said they don't care about us um I, I don't want to go down this total political road. <laughs> Rabbit hole. No, because you don't really get political. But I know I you have, a, I have political my opinions because we've know, talked about it. But Here's the thing with government. I don't care what people, everyone. It's hard to listen to people when they're not following their own rules. That's all I got to say. You can't be talking about climate change like Trudeau and saving the planet. And then he's traveling everywhere on a... I did a government I, paid jet polluting everything, you know, like I, it's, I, I do a court, I do uh, a character on my Instagram page, which I do once in a while. And I only do it because I don't want to do it for the sake of doing, I want to do it when there's something funny. Which I, character is it? I do the Barres Weather Network. Oh, right, right. And it just, I just thought it'd be funny because <laughs> my mom called me once, ma don't stop give, ma don't stop shit the lock with the nand or whatever. It's pouring it's, rain, it's, pouring, it's raining. It's, 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 it's not even pouring, it's shooting. Yeah. It's shoot, the rain it's is shooting just rain. a sheet. It's, it's throwing water at us. <laughs> And uh, it's I found I always found it funny, so I thought let me go out there and just joke. I it's, thought it's, I was only going to do it once yeah, or twice. It's Frank. hilarious, and I know people, by the way, who are not Italian or buddies who think it's funny because it sounds completely it's gibberish, gibberish. Yeah. So, so I I did. I went to Second City, and there's actually an exercise that you do, and you do it on stage when we did our final show, and they'll do it on stage. The main stage of Second City will do this sometimes, where you do a scene, and it, it, it works on your physicality, where what's the subject? Oh, it's a, it's a husband and wife arguing about who's going to drive the kid. It's improv mostly there, right? Yes, okay. but you're not allowed to use words. It's gibberish. And you're just making up stuff. It reminds me. That's what I think people. I'm doing the action now. The buddies understand what I'm saying. Yeah, and you, and, and, it's and, and can hilariously get the jokes. funny. But I think to anyone who and I try to put subtitles it's now. So, yeah, yeah. You, the subtitles work. Yeah. So here's funny. the thing. I and here's the tricky part. <laughs> Anthony, you're so quiet. <laughs> here's the tricky part is. If it ain't funny, even in English, where I could put subtitles, I won't. You I won't do it. I won't do it. Now I'll yeah. do the bocce reading, and I say it in English. At first, I say the Italian, so you get it. I, it and then the it, people who understand English will get the English, and then I say it in a weird gibberish. And I'll tell you something. <laughs> Jerry D, who's a friend of mine, he actually said to me, Frank, I love when you do bocce reading. He's an annoying Leafs fan, but go ahead. <laughs> Am That's I right? With Leafs fans. No, but you're not an no, annoying yeah. Leafs fan. No. But we'll talk about it. Go, go. I get it. And he wrote, I know he wrote something <laughs> yeah. last year and I know it kind of rubbed you, but yeah, you saw that. We were pretty, <laughs> con- we were pretty, we were pretty confident last year. Um, game four, game four, we were confident. I didn't mean to distract you. Let's get back no, to no, the no. bachi. Sorry. So yeah, unless it makes sense. But anyway, what, were, what was the point I was making? Oh my God. I was talking about, I do a character. Uh, which is the Butters Weather Network? Oh my! Oh oh oh! Hang on. So we're now we're talking about. Gut, so I, I, something came up, and I had to make fun of it. And I it was the time when they were telling us not to travel and not go anywhere. And I stayed home because I wanted to do the right thing. But then, you know, some politicians were still traveling. They took pictures of themselves in front of governor fire, of California, in yeah. front of fireplaces some, yeah. Uh, yeah. with stockings. Meanwhile, they were under a palm tree having a mojito. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did a whole Bares Weather Network where I'm like, Stay home, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, see, here we go. Here's the, here's the English uh, I do the English translation. Uh, stay safety. I throw some English that they're going to screw up. 
<laughs> and then I'm like, okay, cut. That's enough. Good. Oh, sorry. And then, I, and then once I say cut, which it's a fake cut, yeah. I start taking my jacket off. I have the, I have the, the, the um, you know, the, the uh, singlet on. I have the, the beach shorts, and, yeah. and then it starts cutting out as I'm talking, and yep. then it, and then all, and really I'm at a beach, yep. and and I'm like, okay, yeah, do service, uh, por favor, and one piña en gulata. <laughs> So, pina colada, pina, pina colada. ingulata means is a pineapple uh, up, up your, your ass. ass. <laughs> ingulata. Um, but that was, and I don't get political, but that yeah. was that was me saying, <laughs> how can you, t- yeah. the news is telling us that politicians are telling us not to go anywhere, and, and this is now tying it back in, and this is what my dad said, I don't trust that these are fucking people. <laughs> Because they'll tell you something, but then they're out doing shit. Yeah, exactly. And and that's what I, I know. Hypocrisy. There's great politicians. There's some great ones out there. Few and far between. <laughs> um, but there's some. Yeah, the it's majority hard of them are. To, it's hard. It's hard yeah. to. Who do you trust? And that, and this is the problem that I'm facing. And meanwhile, we're fighting the general public. Like not fighting, but we're arguing over stuff. Because they divided us, right? And that's they have like a guy like Justin Trudeau. Not to go down that road, because I know you don't want to go there. But my dad was a big liberal that, guy, and he loved he loved Pierre Trudeau. Shockingly, I voted liberal all my life until maybe fifteen years ago, and I started to lean conservative. And now it's hard not to stay on the right because I find the left is completely out of control and ridiculous. I mean, it's just they've lost. But you know. Italians here in in Montreal, like Italians, I'm sure in yeah, Toronto, is liberal for life. Yeah, they're liberals, and, and yeah. uh, I mean, they we are liberals in general. Yeah. The Italians vote but liberal, not, yeah. but because they came here and the liberals gave them the, the exactly. The, but I'll tell you something. Back in the day, my dad couldn't come to Canada unless th- there was a job waiting for him, and yeah. and, and it, not that I'm listen. I understand why people want to come to Canada. It's a beautiful country, but let's let's get away from that. I think it's more about. <laughs> I hate how a lot of us have been divided over all this. And, yeah. and really, in the end, it was about a sickness that was going around. And, and, and now it's about other things. And, and, and how can you not question certain things when it's like, hang on a second. Like, yeah, I get you. I mean, at, I, I just at some that, point, yeah. You, and, and then, you can't lie to yourself anymore and say something's not right here. But in you know we're fighting, but then we go to a comedy club and we're all laughing together, and that's what I wish for everybody. That's what I wish, and that's again, I guess I'm tying it all up here. Do you find it crazy that you're you're here this weekend in Montreal, and uh, you know in Ontario they've lifted the mask mandate, and and here everyone's still wearing masks till the middle of May. It's weird, right? You for- I just then felt weird. you said you forgot your mask. I forgot. I left the hotel room and I forgot my mask, and yeah. then I was like, do 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 do, and I pressed the button, and I'm like. I saw myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> and I went back, and then I'm like, oh my god, where's my key? And lucky, I, I remember when they asked me, would you like one key or two? Uh, or two? And I always get two because sometimes one doesn't work, and it's one in the morning coming back from the show. I'm like, there's got to be another one in here. I'm like, well, thank God. I thought I was gonna have to go downstairs with no mask. People would have looked at me with yeah. the corn. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to episode 19 of the Drive-By Podcast, sponsored by Playground, your number one gaming destination, just minutes south of downtown Montreal in the Mohawk territory of Ganawage. And I'm your host, Freeway Frank, every single Sunday as we give you tens of thousands of dollars with a brand new game show this week, debuting on Sunday. It's called Chase the Ace. Now, you'll want to be one of 15 players selected to pick from a deck of cards. 15 cards, each worth, by the way, all the cards are worth between $100 and $1,500. If you pick the Ace of Spades or the Ace of Playground, you move on towards picking up a possible $25,000 progressive jackpot. Now, the draws begin at 1 p.m., all the way until 8 p.m. on Sunday night. And then at 8.15 p.m., I debut the game show, and I can't wait to do it once again. All the Chase the Ace winners will receive a Lucky Keys license plate golden ticket for a chance to win a brand new 2022 fully electric Mazda MX-30 GT worth $40,000. That is happening this Sunday and every Sunday until July 3rd at Playground. Check out the link below here on YouTube. Go there right now to get your $10 of freeway, that's me, play. Or if you're listening, go to playground.ca slash
Freeway Frank, and we'll see you there. But it is different here from Ontario because Ontario, slightly, and Quebec, though, for, slightly. Ontario, and Quebec, for 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 the most part, I felt you know with what Doug Ford was doing and what Francois Legault was doing, they were pretty much you know on this doing yeah. the same thing. But then I just felt, and my wife feels it because her her my in laws are in Ontario, that it's a little bit more relaxed right just enough it and, is right and anthony's now. from ottawa you're from toronto it is right now it is right now, now but again. here it's still a you know i mean like the now i know i mentioned liberals but are the pcs any different now i'm gonna say i'm gonna say ford lifted is it because an election's coming up of course yes so if there because was no there's elections a, would it be the same and the same thing in quebec there's an election coming up now no I'm you're sound right like 100%. my dad uh. I know trust these fucking people. <laughs> okay, let's do. So one of the things Frank is known for on social media is uh, the Bacci readings. Bacci, for those of you who don't know, is an Italian chocolate, the most popular. It's like our what version of a fortune cookie, but it tastes yeah, way better and yeah. it's not stale. And it's not about the future. It's about your your present love life. Oh, and I don't know why That's I'm right. having trouble with the wrapper. Yeah, everything's harder in Quebec. See. <laughs> Once it goes oh my God! There was a mask on it. No, oh my God. <laughs> Bachi is kiss. Bachi, Bachi means, kiss. means kiss. You're right. Bachi Hershey means kiss. kiss. Thank but you for. Better. You're right. They copied Hershey, by the way. Yeah. Okay, I don't, I'm going to get in trouble. I don't want to get your podcast in trouble. Okay, Frank. So this is another thing I learned. Everybody. Bachi reading. Here we go. Um, my vision's going. So. Um, oh, you want my glasses? You know what? I clean them, and. I just started wearing. I'm wearing those. contacts, by the way, and I still can't read these. I'm nearsighted, but that may work. Good. Hey, look good. You look. Uh, you look raffinat. You look distinguished with those. I are. look uh, like I'm from Milan yeah. or somewhere. You know what, Frank? No, no, what? No, 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 no. And you know what's funny is is the di the dialects in in body from one town to the next completely, completely change. different. Yeah, completely change. Like my parents are from Trigiano, and next door is Capours. Adostama don't do puts. And what does that sound like to you? The Madonna from the smell. That's what I was about to say. No, il pozzo is, is a, a, a well. A well. So yeah. they found a picture in a well yeah. that didn't deteriorate. <laughs> It, like it was still preserved i guess and they thought this is a miracle yeah this lady is a madonna now yeah because she found the some artist shellacked his <laughs> i don't know and now it's still surviving and yeah. she became ama don't do puts <laughs> but they speak different too and i had i had my relatives in adelphia in body yeah and we would say now we sound more Trijanes, we sound more uh uh uh. It's more bar oh, anyway, I don't want to say barbaric. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but but then I got my my relatives in Adelphia, which is a few minutes away. Mashumer, umer, umar. It's just different. Yeah. It's incredible. And in um, where my dad's from Giovinazzo, and one of my best friends is from San Icand. Yeah. Again, it's night and day. Sometimes I have to you know, I have to even when you say something, I'm gonna, I have yeah. to stop and really focus on what you're saying, you know, because it's not, it's not my buddies that yeah. are slightly it, off. It's like, oh my God, I so can't. Here we go. Bacci reading. So first is the Italian, then English, then I'm going to try to butcher it in, ba in Bares. La vere. Oh my God. I hope this is Wait, wait a good you got to look at the camera first. Oh, the way yeah. you do, you know how you do the lip thing? Yeah. <laughs> can you zoom in? Anthony. <laughs> no. no. Don't you have a remote? Maybe we're not in post. <clears throat> we're not that sophisticated yet. Frank, can you pass me the water before? Um, I know what's going on here. It's um, <laughs> so per the lava, la, la, how do you say lava? So so per salvo. La <laughs> You lost the, the. You lose your your voice. You of lost course, your I voice. Lost my voice. Uh, you know what? When I get into a studio, I feel like I'm Barry White all of a sudden. <laughs> Hi everybody! I'm really well because you hear yourself. You hear on, yourself. Yeah. I'm not. Sounds great. And it's funny when hey, I'm now. on stage, I'm more like, "Hey everybody, what's happening, man?" Because I'm trying you to go high. Yeah, because I'm trying yeah. to get the energy, and it's a big room. But here, I feel like everybody. Yeah. Okay, let's Bravo. do the. Back. Here we go. La vera passione d'amore è tanto rara quanto il caso che oh my god che che due si incontrano Encontrino. Oh my God! I should have read. The, we should have faked one. We should have. Anyway, we'll, we'll, no, it's good. It's good. The In true, English. Here we go. Okay. The true passion of love is a is rare. Okay. Yeah. Is rare as the case that these two meet. Wow. How am I gonna do this now? 
The Bares. <laughs> A passion. I always get louder <laughs> for some reason. Everyone says, you know what? He gets so loud. Well, because that's what we do. A passion de l'amour e na que se strana come quando sti do Christian si incontrano e come si incontrano then I add more come quando so do cugine che se sposano in zim <laughs> no, you when, you're, get when, when you're two cousins who marry each other. Yeah, so love. <laughs> <laughs> the passion of love is as rare as the case that these two meet, or like when two cousins get married, and that happens in body. Oh, yeah. Hap not nowadays, but I don't think in 2022, but in 1922, uh, that happened. Frank, one more. Can we do one more? Absolutely. One more. One more. Oh, Just, hang on. Uh, but I and you, to, you I get to eat the chocolate, too, and then you I go to the gym after. But uh, I wanted uh, to uh, tell this story. I went to, yeah. I was about 20. It was, I started, maybe I was just starting comedy, 25 or something, 20, oh fuck, I'm gonna <laughs> date myself. Um, and I went to Italy and uh, I was hanging out with, and look, I got some pretty cousins, right? And then you thought people about it. I didn't know, no, but they were like, my <laughs> my older cousin who feels like my aunt said, que me da que, whatever, right? I feel, look at I her. I wanna say the name, yeah. I mean, look at her. She's beautiful, eh? Why don't you, and they would say, percina na chaff. Why don't you grab her? Why don't you grab her? Which is... She's hot, but she's your cousin. What they meant by grab was, why don't you go after her? Yeah, it's it's not, uh, it's figuratively. Yeah, it's not figuratively. actually grab her. Yeah. She's like, why don't you go after her? I'm like, but isn't she my cousin? <laughs> and and she said, <laughs> Yeah, which means, uh, what, what, is, what, is what does that, that have to do? What, yeah, yeah, what is that going to do? <laughs> but Frank, the funny part is, is I said it to her, I'm like, isn't she my cousin? And she's like a chef fotch. And at that point I realized that she married the one I'm talking to, who's telling me to go after that one, she married her uncle. She married her uncle. I'm gonna get in shit. <laughs> I, she married her dad's brother. Well, back in the day, okay, this happened a lot. But now if this, we go back to the royal bloodlines, isn't yeah. Does that the, the happen? They wanted to keep it pure, so they kept. Well, in the royal, yeah. Is that or no, just no. more the families? No, we're talking about. Uh, are you talking about the British? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. That they kept it pure, I think. But Italians didn't care, right? It's kind of like there's a lot of cultures nowadays that still have arranged marriages and still marry. But is within. it relatives? But is that even a good thing? Because uh, no, that's not good. Inbred is uh, because it's, um, it's, it's, you wonder why you got that one cousin that's like three foot six. <laughs> Hey, Anthony, you got a couple of those? <laughs> He's like, yes. <laughs> Bachi reading number two. Oh, yeah, Bachi reading number two. <laughs> Numero deux. Numero deux. Numero deux. Have you gone to Bari? Have you gone? Uh, yeah, I was in there right before COVID, actually. So, actually, didn't we COVID could have... Didn't, <laughs> didn't we all do shit before COVID? <laughs> I love people that say, I gained weight during COVID. Right, yeah. yeah, I gained yeah. weight before, before COVID. COVID. I gained weight after But I was COVID. literally there, Frank... Uh, maybe two months before, and they say, once we started the pandemic, we were, we were deep into it, they were saying that COVID was apparently already there when you in the there. months when I was there, which was very possible. Because I was in Lombardia, in Milan, where it came in from the Wuhan clan. So, the Wuhan. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something, uh, Frank. Um, and this is where I, I feel like a little ripped off, too. Um, you like my glasses? Buddy? I love your glasses. <laughs> Look, it'll fix it. Oh my God, I don't have a lazy eye anymore. Uh, there's a joke about me having a lazy eye too. Um, what were you saying? Uh, no, um, things were great before. <laughs> <laughs> no, meaning, meaning comedy-wise. Yeah, I had everything just, was better I, before. Yeah, you know, I got a visa and everything, and I really thought I was going to make a big push, and I still a visa and uh, American I like to go to the states yeah, more, nice. right? And I had got my visa in the past and everything, but it was Are you going to get it again? Yeah, and yeah. I still have it. I still oh, have this cool, one, cool. which is great. Nice. Um, but then there weren't shows happening, like even Ange says, you know, that's why he's on cruises a lot too. It's so hard in the states because now things are starting to open up and, yeah. and and pick up even more. You know, things you know it takes a while. You plan they plan two months ago for shows that are happening today. Yeah. Like a lot of the big names were doing the clubs, the small clubs in the States when they were sort of opened. Mm -hmm. It was hard for new people. Not that I'm new, but even like Angie's like, it's so hard to get spots because like all the, all like the big guys who want to go out are taking up all these spots yeah. and stuff. Uh, but um, 
oh, we had such a great, we were in such a great groove, me and Angie. We did the Evil Eye comedy tour, yeah, which we taped, and 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 we're still, you know, figuring stuff out of what to do with that recording. It's just if, and it's not just me. I just I feel everybody, like it put yeah. a big halt yeah, to everybody, course. and and but whatever. But the whatever. entertainment industry, you know, we got what nailed. you do in comedy, you got nailed big time, everybody. Okay, we're gonna do this. Here we go. Bachi reading, number due. L'amico sa tutto di te, eppure, i, i pia, eppure li piaci. Wow. A friend knows all about you, yet still likes you. Okay. Yeah, especially after the <laughs> lockdown for two years. <laughs> <laughs> bodies, bodies. <laughs> this guy. These were written during COVID. Yeah, right? no, this says, uh, <laughs> Skrit, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Februari 2019. <laughs> oh, that was before February COVID. 2008. So this was yeah, before, before COVID. COVID. Unfortunately, I was. La milk, cano, shututi katsut, e anger to piac, specialmente fat de prima disposa. Especially the stories before you were Got married. Got married. Um, it's true. Bachi man. reading number two. Bachi. And you're uh, you're gonna you're gonna eat those. I hope. No, you can't. Eat. Okay, you want to share? I, yeah, I know, but I, I mean, I put my fingers on it, but yeah, uh, we. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I don't I don't really care about this stuff. You don't want me to spray Our, it? Well, first? I had I had. Uh, well, you were breathing all over. It's too late. But uh, I had <laughs> I had Guido in here, who you know, Cacomelo, and he literally got off a plane from from Los Angeles, went to his mom's house for dinner, and came straight here. Didn't even say anything. Didn't no qualms. Nothing. You know, we just did our thing. So there you go. These are fantastic. I keep hitting this thing. These are fantastic. Sir, when you did I it in bad A's, did you say your cousin doesn't know anything about you, but they still like you? I, didn't, I missed that in the translation. <laughs> no, I said, La Mik, your friend. My, <laughs> oh, your my friend. friend knows a lot <laughs> about friend. me. La Mik knows everything about me and still likes me, especially the things we did before we were married. Um <laughs> You're I, from. You're trying see, to make it friendly, but. Anthony, our uh, my producer, his dad actually lives in Abruzzo. So, but he they immigrated here to Canada. They lived in Ottawa, and then he figured it out. Like my dad always used to say, my dad all he did was complain. Literally every time I saw him <laughs> saying, I don't know why we came here. I goes then leave. Then go back. Let, let's that's go back. Exactly and your dad went back. And that's what your dad did. That's why yeah. I respect your, your, his father because we he got the. These. How many years ago did he did he leave? Man, fifteen almost. Yeah. You know what? Good for him because I'll tell you something. My mom tells you don't know until you get older and you start asking the questions. And then my dad got sick and passed away. And then you know your mom starts telling you stories. And he told me a lot. You know, I, I kind of knew, I kind of knew when my dad was going to go, because um, he just started recounting his life to me uh, when he was in the hospital. And uh, he told me a lot of stories. But my mom, I didn't realize. My mom said to me that my dad uh, at first didn't like. Canada like you know it was an adjustment and he would leave and then my mom said hey this isn't uh Italy and body after you go to work you got to come home you got to help out this isn't, this isn't going to the club or going to Umar <laughs> and the uh, ocean uh, the, yeah. and um smack a couple of uh poop around have you ever done that uh, uh, that's you know what as somebody who does that okay, I saw it and so basically it's they, horrific it's horrific when to watch and apparent you know an octopus upop uh, octopuses is, is uh, they say are very smart and it pained me to watch you know the the fishermen off the coast of Jovinats doing that and I was like what are they and I was I could uh, my friend goes you don't want to watch as, this as a comic I could yeah. see the funny part of it well of course but but and I could reality, see the funny part of it but to me it's, it was they were, painful to watch as somebody so let's explain to the yeah. audience um, <laughs> sometimes at night but as people have a couple extra glasses of wine and they decide let's go eat raw fish which is fantastic. Which is and great. And it's tasteful. But, but. They're eating mussels. They're opening them up right on the ocean. There's, do you know this? Okay, because we're, Jovinats is, it's rocks, right? Yeah, it's Lots all rocks. Of boulders. Rocky beaches. You got to, in Bari, sometimes you got to travel a little south or north. You got to find the pockets of sand, sand because there's a lot, of, yeah, there's a lot of sholye, yeah. which are the, the big boulders. And, yeah. and you'll go and you'll tan on a, you're like a frying, you're like a frying egg. Yeah, on, exactly. On the thing. But at night, uh, and, and did you ever see Iambra Palouse? Iambra Palouse is... Um, the hairy crabs. Yeah, yeah. Iambra Pelose. Pelose, yeah. 
Pylos is the hair. Irichi, which is okay, sea urchin. there's the sea urchin, yeah. which they eat, which I'm Fat, like, oh my God, you like it? Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. It's I fantastic. just started eating oysters, man. I'm yeah. behind. I love oysters. Too, huh? I like oysters. But octopus, what they do. Okay. Do we, yeah. But do you know, what, you know what they do to the ambru pelos, to the, to the crabs? Do you no. ever see them where they just pick them off? The rock when they catch them and they eat their legs off. They just off, eat them right, yeah. Like and they savages. throw the body ba back. Yeah, and I'm sure. This poor yeah. crab's like, holy shit, how am I going to get back on the rock? <laughs> it, uh, they'll grab the pulpo, like they'll, yeah. they'll buy a few, you know, and it's a thing, let's go eat fresh octopus by the beach. Uh, and they'll buy it in the bucket off the fishermen, at, at, but it's too tough. So they got to tenderize it and they literally throw it they, you grab it and you're whipping it against a, a rock. rock. And like you said, these, yeah. these the, they're intelligent animals. And you I just see watch. them go yeah. smack. Yeah. Oh, and why you see, are these guys doing this to me? When it's at the market on the ice and it's dead, you look at it and you don't even think twice. When you see, it's the same, and then it's the same thing with cows and pigs and all that, right? That when you see yeah. the torture, that's when you're like, you can't watch that. So that and I get it. See, and that's yeah, why it's, like, it's painful. And I yeah. joke like, oh, yeah. you don't eat meat, but I, but I, I get it. <laughs> and and listen. And I get it because I'll eat a steak and it's to me it's a piece of meat. But when I start, and my kids like eating wings, but I'll eat a few wings and it's, but it's still starting to look like it's a piece of the animal, right? Yep. Imagine like a human arm and like, hey, we're having arms, you know, like other. Yep. Um, I, I, after I can have a few wings, I actually start getting like, I don't want to eat this anymore because yep. it starts looking like the animal. But, that it's who we like. I don't know. Like, but what? I found when I was younger, I didn't even think about it, no. and then when I became vegan and then vegetarian after, it's like that's all you think about. Like for me now, to cut through a steak would be difficult to do. Oh, really? Yeah, but if I'm in, you know, um, Tuscany, and the, there's Lebby steak, and you know, I've had a couple of drinks. I haven't done it yet, but you know, you probably it, it, it might happen. It might happen. You know, isn't it funny? Beef steak. Well, beef steak. <laughs> call it here. Beef steak. Frank. Yes. So, okay. hockey playoffs are about to start. Oh, yes. The Toronto Maple Leafs, your team, forever doomed. You could you could bug me all and your friend Angelo all you want now because Montreal finished dead last in the National Hockey League. We are hopefully going to get the first pick. Toronto Maple Leafs looking fantastic. Austin Matthews just scored sixty goals. Um, you know, we always have this discussion about superstition and what's going to happen. As much as I can't stand the Toronto Maple Leafs, I like you as a Leafs fan, and I have several friends of mine who are from Toronto who are Leafs fans that are that I that I more than tolerate because they're just cool people. And then there's the annoying Leaf fans. I never considered yeah. you an annoying Leafs oh, fan. Thanks, man. So I could have this and say this to you. I wouldn't be able to say this to some other people. I think this year. I'm not saying that uh, God. Oh, God forbid the Leafs win the Stanley Cup, but <laughs> but oh, it would be torture. But I think this year you'll go a little further before the choke happens. I don't think it'll be an immediate choke. I could be wrong, but I just see this team is too talented to not. But it's so scary because we failed so many times. Frank, so many times and, and we, in our lifetime. I feel, yeah, I feel snake bitten and I, I'm taking it personally. Like I feel snake bitten. The team seems like they're, and you can't catch a break. You know, you go through like what you guys are going through now uh, as a Montreal fan. Uh, you're seeing your team, which is weird because last year you guys, you know, but hey, you rode a wave, man, and and that's hell of a wave last year, <sighs> but almost unrealistic. Would you last trade? Year. But would you trade that for anything? Like you got you got to go to the show, you know. I know this year, you know, meaning you didn't. This year was a schkefetz, like this year was, I, but but you got to experience. So was it even worse now? Because you would it have been better if they didn't go far last year? Frank, I'll tell you this. I don't remember the last time I missed a Montreal Canadiens game prior to this season. But this season? This game. season, I must have missed uh, 82 games. I must have missed, no joke, 73, 74. I missed all of them. When, when your <laughs> because, team's not doing well, though, yeah. and you know, like, listen, you had Carey Price going through his thing. You lose Carey went out. You yeah. lose the no. You lose so many guys. Weber, like and, I was like, and in the first place last year, you shouldn't have been that far. So... As a as a the fact that they did it, I would listen as a Leaf fan to see my team in the final. I would have took that over anything. So even though this year is kind of a cacarel for yeah. for you guys, 
at least you had that. You got to experience it. Listen, I joke about it all the time. I've watched Italy win the World Cup. I've watched Raptors win uh, a couple years ago. I watched the Blue Jays win some World, World Series. I've even seen Team Canada win gold medals. We saw it all, really. I've yeah. seen everything. You have never seen. I've never seen. Yeah. And I've seen the Habs win so many times. And you've as seen a, a the youngster. Habs win. I've yeah. never yeah. seen the Leafs. Okay, other than the 90s when they were, you know, quarterfinal, like not in the final, but yeah. And and yeah, I'm a Leafs fan, and I hope people just don't judge me on that. But uh, whatever. But you you're know. from Toronto. I'm from Toronto, yeah. so I've been following, and it's at at this point, it's almost like, uh, am I going to see anything happen? Like it's almost like I remember when I was a kid. I'm like, listen, we're only eight years old. I'm sure by the time I'm <laughs> fifty. I'm going to watch them yeah, win. That worked out well. <laughs> Still waiting. Um, you don't get it. You don't, you honestly, you come across as you don't get a good feeling about this here either. Really? Like you're just, because you know one what, of the first Frank, things you when mentioned when been, you came in and you gave me that look, like you just don't feel I don't want to, you know? I don't want to, every year I'm like, <laughs> yes, we're going to do well. And, and I get so disappointed. So I think I'm starting to be like my dad where he's like, they're going to lose. And then if they win, then... Set your expectations yeah. very low. So. And and not not for anything. I believe in the team. They're a great team. I, the goalie, am I... And here's the thing. Do I believe that they're a good team? Yes. Are they a team that I believe can win in the playoffs? They could, but they haven't totally shown it. You know what I'm saying? I do, have, you, do you think what, they have that cloud hanging over them? You know, that they haven't won since that. 67 and they know there's so much pressure because let's be honest, everybody, you know, like... You know what it was? Frank last year hurt so much. Oh, that was painful I know, for you're you guys, yeah. Why are you smiling? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Because you, <laughs> you know what? I didn't expect us to be there and the fact we got there and then we took... And I'll tell you something. That, that was, the, the fact that the Leafs played Montreal, yeah. Leafs-Habs, to see it in my lifetime That was too, great. It was just great to see, and I yep. even said it. I even said it to people with Angelo on your yeah, uh, live and, and he's and he's from Montreal, right? So he's a big Habs fan. He's a big Habs fan, and he, he grew up in Ottawa, so he's also uh, an Ottawa fan. And then he moved to LA, so he's a Kings fan. So you know, some people have three teams, some people have one. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> his odds are better, um, but ah, um, oh, like last year, especially being up, that one hurt because it was up three. You know, it that would have got rid of that cloud. Now, who do they play this year now? The, the st defending Stanley Cup champs. It could happen You could again. be as good, it could happen but who again, has yeah. the experience? Yeah. And then I, we were talking about who do you think the Leafs would have preferred to play? Tampa? Boston. Or Boston. Yeah. But then you got Boston that has got their number all these years. Basically, but they have to get over it, you know, this hump. But do you, now, as as a hockey fan, do you think they should change the format? One well, against, I, I remember when one we were against 16. 16, yes. When when we were growing up. That's how it was. That's how it was. So 116, 215, 3. I thought that was the it most fair format because you're literally playing, the best team is playing technically the worst team that made it into yeah, the playoffs. You, and now, with this format, which I thought they were going to change, Tampa and Toronto, uh, even Toronto bot, like it's just they're like three and four in the league or something. It doesn't make sense. Or three I never understood why they do that. It's and, and and that's where it's like, I think next year now they're finally going to change it because so it is happening. Okay, but not not in time. Okay, for my team, not in time. But wait, are they changing well, next it next year, year to to one eight two seven or are they doing yeah, one sixteen? How many teams are there? No, it would be one and eight. I think they're going to keep. Uh, Eastern and Western. East and West, which is yeah. still... Because like, back in the day, it, wasn't it, it was both, right? I think. But Once when you look at it, there's so much parity that even one in eight, you're still playing a good team. So let's say the yeah. Leafs... the Leafs, Anything could happen. The Leafs would be what? Number three? Three. And so they'd play six. six. So who's six? Who's, who's six right the, now? Florida's Pittsburgh? first. Tampa. Sorry, Pittsburgh maybe, yeah. Or Tampa, it's, yeah, still, it's still the same it's almost. Still the same, yeah. So it really doesn't matter. The yeah. teams are so good. But listen, one thing will erase the cloud is if they beat Tampa in the first round. Then, but here's the thing: Am I worried about Tampa? Sure, but if they beat Tampa, then their they have a chance. Are gonna yeah. be. I think they. St I mean, who do you think's the team in the in the East? Florida. Florida. They're just too They're good. They're jacked, and you know why? They were able to do. They were able to get Giroux and everybody because yeah. next year some of those contracts go from They're done. Like, yeah five and a half to ten like i forget who's there's a few contracts that are jumping up next year and yep. they won't that's why they went all in florida this year yeah and i think they well look and good for them i they, think from the east it's going to be the panthers and i think and i'm hoping you know i took edmonton back in october at 15 to one i don't do lots of gambling 
Quiet Anthony. Uh, I used to, <laughs> but no, I haven't. I haven't put in a bet in a long time. Super Bowl, uh, maybe the Masters. <laughs> That's it. Uh, every big event. So I took Edmonton. They were fifteen to one. So Edmonton, Calgary. Yeah, Calgary's good. You team, know, but is it Colorado's? It could be Colorado is too. It Colorado's. I'm uh, hoping for a Canadian team, but not Toronto. Obviously, I can never cheer. I just I can't do. I it. I know you said it before, I can't and you do know it. what. The fact that Toronto lost to Montreal, I said, now I hope Montreal goes far because it makes us look good. Um, but you said it back then. I could never cheer. You're like blue, blanc, et rouge. rouge. I just can't you do it. it. And you know what? A true Leafs fan, and I think I had this conversation with you. I don't know if it was on the, the IG, but I've had it so, with so many Leafs fans. My friends who are the biggest Leafs fans mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't have cheer total for disdain for the Montreal Canadiens, and that's the way I like it. I don't want... I never got... Each to their own. I never understood how somebody could say, "Okay, well, uh, the ha the um, the Leafs are gone. I'm going to cheer for the Habs." Whoa! I'm going to say it, just, it doesn't. So let make me sense. explain something. Yeah. But wait a minute! You grew up in a different era watching First great all, Montreal Canadiens teams. Yeah, I couldn't watch the Leafs in the playoffs no, back then. Exactly. So they were out in the first it is round. For you. I look back. Hey, the Leafs lost to the Minnesota North Stars in the in the '79. So right. Like, and and my dad. And the funny thing is, is my dad always appreciated. Who glass Kettenev? Who Montreal Canadiens? They guys, Frank, good the game, good the series. In Montreal, Boston. That was the the late seventies when Montreal yeah. was playing Boston. And my dad's like, Frank, you got to watch this. That almost like the Leafs got me into hockey. Obviously, I was yeah. a Borja Salming fan. Fan. I was a def I played defense when I was you know a little younger, and I I liked Salming because he wore twenty one. I was born on twenty one. It was a bit of a weird thing, but he was a great defenseman. But watching playoffs and watching that environment. Getting excited it was like, was I ever a, a soccer fan? No, but when Italy made it, and I, you saw the excitement, and the Canadians, in a sense, was oh, it's the Canadian team beating the American team, and and any time you saw table hockey, it was always that. It was a lot of Canadians and Bruins players with the no helmet. You yeah. know, it looked classic. Um, but I think that's that was the time when I was getting into hockey, so. I have a respect, and look, and I watched great series, uh, Montreal, Boston, Lafleur, which you know doesn't matter if you're Lafleur is a hero to people, right? A hockey fans, yeah. It doesn't matter. Big if loss. A, it doesn't matter community. if you're a Hab fan. So let me go yeah. back to you saying I don't understand Leaf fans. I'm going to cheer for the Habs now. <laughs> um, no, we normally wouldn't, but. Do I wish happiness for my friend Frank to be excited about his team winning? Yes. But you're I a good person, though. I wouldn't and want... And I'm a generally, you know, a genuinely Would good it person? have hurt if, it, if the Habs yeah. won? Would it have stung a little bit? Because then you guys could say, I watched my team win it in 4K. Cause, because <laughs> because for the longest time, that's what I heard. Hey, Frank, yeah. did you ever watch your hockey team win it in color? Yeah. I'm like, only when they color corrected it on Leafs <laughs> TV, when they added color. Yeah. Um, would it have stung a little bit? Like, fuck, they won again. Look, and it was our year. It was supposed yeah. to be more us. I think that's why it would have stung. But do I, do I wish that your team doesn't win? If they were in the final, I, I, I felt, I know so many people in Montreal, I wanted you guys to party. You know what I'm saying? It was about that too. Yeah, it's hard for me even. I don't to, wish bad on my friends. Yeah. you know, like to me, the only team, the only like when the Blue Jays won back to back, Joe Carter was phenomenal those two years. But I was a huge Montreal Expos fan. I couldn't cheer for the oh, Blue okay. Jays. I watched it because I was a big baseball fan. But I was, I remember that home run from Joe Carter. But I couldn't get myself. And then when the Raptors came along, I was living in Vancouver when the Grizzlies oh, were out. Okay. And I was going to a lot of Grizzly games. And then when they went to Memphis, I just couldn't cheer for them anymore. And, I, and But I was a lot more into basketball back in the day, and Anthony's a big basketball fan. It still pains me. Really? It's crazy when, that there were 10, 15, 20,000 people in downtown Montreal watching the Raptors when they won that year. And people couldn't understand it. They would look at me and go, Frank, how could, how could you say that? It was a Canadian team and all that. I go, you don't understand. And I had lived in Toronto for seven years, too, and I had a great time there. I met a lot yeah. of great people. Yeah. I just can't cheer for a Toronto team. I just can't do it. Okay, so yeah. And but I watched I it, it with Anthony, and I and I watched, but I couldn't understand. I go, there's twenty, and I said that must be the younger generation, because people from my generation, it's just a hard thing to do but to cheer any to any cheer Toronto. For Toronto. Team? It's okay, just I get it. Do. I get I'm it. I'm being honest, and yeah. it has nothing to do. I wish you the best in life and everything you do. I cheer for all my friends and everything. Yeah. Like, when it comes to the, 
Like, I actually have more disdain for the Maple Leafs than I do for the Bruins. Isn't that sick? Like, the Bruins annoy me less than the Toronto Maple Leafs. Could it be because you lived there and there was something that No, because I, I always told myself, this is the thing I learned, because we all grow as people. My biggest fear was, back in the day when I worked in radio, eventually, if I do this right for many years, I'm going to end up in Toronto. And I was <laughs> like, I don't want to go to Toronto. Yeah. But when I ended up there, seven of the best years of my life, Nice. Great memories. I met my wife there. Some of my best friends are from Toronto. One of my closest friends, Carlo, who listens to this podcast, is a massive Leafs fan. Annoys me. I annoy him when it comes to that. But he <laughs> hates the Habs as much as I hate the Leafs, but we're friends. Toronto's yeah. a great city. It really is. Yeah. But I just can't get myself around to doing it. And but Anthony he, doesn't understand it. You might a little more. Well, no, but here's what gets me. I get it. The, Munch, the Leafs and Munch and Habs because there's a there's two teams and there's a team in each city and 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 but there's no Montreal basketball team so you you couldn't and that's why I let it go a tiny bit like you know like I watch it and when they won I was like I wasn't happy but it was fun obviously not going to cheer for the other team right but I wasn't really cheering but you I think it has it. something to do with hockey in a way or no for sure it has something to do with hockey I think it has to do a lot with. You know the fans? Yeah. So okay, some of the so. fans draped with Leafs flags and their flags on their cars after they win one round and they're partying like, you know, this is the best but thing. Frank, it's kind of like the Italians when we win. Well, I don't like when, that either. I know. Yeah. And I don't, I'll gotta, I gotta say something. And I, I love it when, I love it when Italy wins, but I will not take out my flag until it's like quarterfinals or something. Then I'll put it. When it starts meaning something, I'll put it outside exactly. my house. But the new generation would have it out for it's game just one. A party, they're just out like Woodbridge Avenue yeah. in Toronto. Like, same here. It's, it's the young and here they're all they're how they're how finding reasons to you know me, yeah. meet each other. Exactly. How painful is it that Italy will not be at the World Cup later? Uh, Frank's gone. Shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> no. Kind of like COVID. They don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, but just, it's yeah. it's just painful. To, 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 yeah. to, to, as Italian fans, I know, like, wh wh who are we going to cheer for? Like, I'll have to, I'm going to well, watch Canada. it because it's the. Listen, well, Canada's I mean, saving our ass. Obviously, we're going to cheer for, for Canada. Us. Obviously, we're going to cheer for Canada, but I'm saying, and I shouldn't say this, but realistically, how far could Canada go? I'll be cheering all the way, but let's say after Canada goes, imagine Canada ends up winning like Greece did in the Euro in 2004. Oh my God. That would be crazy. But let's say Canada doesn't go, who do you cheer for? I can't cheer. Again, we go down the same. Portugal? Maybe, I can't cheer for Portugal, even though I respect Ronaldo, even though Carlo, who's a big Leafs fan, can't stand them. Okay. Can't, okay. Um, but I can't cheer for Portugal. I can't cheer for Germany. I can't cheer for... Um, who am I going to cheer for? Like, yeah. there's just no Spain. It's, Spain, I, zero chance. Listen, I, 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 I just, I think I'll watch Canada and then I'll, I'll watch some of the important games, but I don't, I don't think I'll be invested in it because, like, it's Italy or, or bust, right? We don't have that other team. I mean, Portugal, Portugal loses. They, they cheer for Brazil, I guess, because a lot of Portuguese yeah. in Brazil. We don't really have that other team. We don't have that other team. But we come together this year with Canada, so that'll. We be are. I wonder. I wonder if Woodbridge Avenue, like, if Canada wins or ties again. I think so. I you think, think the Italian neighborhoods are going to cheer. Look, we're going to be Canadian all of a sudden. Remember Italy in World War Two? Like, okay, Italy was. Uh, remember, and all of a sudden, that's why they 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 always call this the double flag, right? It was like, remember, it was on this side, and all oh, of a sudden. Yeah. I think we're gonna go on this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So it, it it'll be easy to flip the flag, and I think here in the East End and and all, all the Italian parts of Toronto, I think of course because we're proud Canadians, and Italy's not in it. It would have been harder. Can you imagine? In a way, it's almost if it's Italy. What, what would you have done? A Canadian flag on one side of the car and That's an Italian flag on the other side. I wonder if Canadians get get. A, but here's the thing, and we are Canadian. Like I'm born in Canada. We're Canadian, I'm Canadian yep. with Italian heritage. Yep. And um, I, do you think do you think Canadian people got upset when Italians were waving an Italian flag, or did they understand it was just about a game? I think some Canadians get are bothered during the, because I've heard it, during Euro, during that, because all these other flags are flying, except for the Canadian flag. But now, by the way, nowadays you can't even fly the Canadian f flag because it okay, means something yeah, that's completely, another, that's another story yeah. for another day. But I think now that Canada's in it, yeah. ca Canadians will truly understand for the first time what it means. And I think everybody will rally around Canada and, and having, I mean, this is it. This is, I, we haven't done this since 1990s, 1986, and think about it. When you have a team like Italy not in it, and Canada is, 
But you know what's crazy, what's man? Happening? This is like <laughs> I I got it the last World Cup that we didn't make it and and stuff happens, right? And then maybe the team was going through something, but we just won a Euro after that, and now we're the not biggest in. prize in your in European and, and, soccer, and we now we're not in the World Cup. But there's argument that the Euro Cup is tougher. It is tougher than because when you're playing the worlds, you're playing teams like and I don't want to disrespect you're playing teams like Canada Cameroon mm -hmm. maybe teams that they won in their area but are that when you're playing Europe you're playing the some the of, best the best of the best of the best yeah. uh, you know let's exclude some South American and maybe you know other countries like you know the Brazils aren't in there yeah. and the Argentinians and stuff and Uruguay but you're Gu playing. guaranteed if you did the average ranking of all the teams in Euro the, versus the average FIFA ranking and all the teams in the World Cup, you're 100% right because yeah. they have they need representation from all the different. Uh, yeah, uh, Euros is tougher. In, in it is the harder. World Cup, right? Euros but, is tougher. But you know, Italy is still, if I'm not mistaken, Anthony. Maybe you could fact check this. Um, <laughs> I haven't asked you to fact check anything, but isn't Italy fifth? Or sixth, somewhere around there in the FIFA rankings right now, in even world, as even though they lost, even though they're not in, just to say. But didn't, didn't they have a great record going? Well, not, they, other than winning it, but weren't they winning? They a were lot one of their point out, but Switzerland was. You know, there was too many ties. Too many Italy ties. Italy couldn't score. They were just tying, tying, yeah. tying. That's what did okay. it. Okay, four, four ties. So Italy yeah. is number six rank in the there world. Six. They're not in the World Cup. Crazy. And I was like, Anthony just came out of nowhere all of a sudden. I'm like, yeah. who's that? <laughs> um, I'm here, guys. So I was talking to my cousin. If you ever want to talk soccer, like I, he's he knows way. I ask him when. Yeah, I, when I don't know. His... Yeah, I, I ask him, and and I and he's from Chicago. My cousins live in Chicago. Great, beautiful family. Just great, great guys. Uh, Tony and Enzo, and the brother John Luca, and they're big soccer fans. And uh, you know, I'm a hockey fan. I'm a hockey fan before too, I'm first, a soccer yeah. fan. But they're soccer fans before hockey. And uh, they got to watch the, sh you know, ch Chicago Black Hacks, Black Hacks. They have these different accents, right? It's hilarious. Um, like my wife's Natalie. I call her Natalie, but they say, hey, Natalie. Natalie. Yeah. Natalie. Um, <laughs> I said, what was the problem? What's going on with Italy? And they're like, if you look, it's, it's even amazing that we won the Euros because they won with, without a bona fide, bona fide striker. Yep. If you really think, there's no guy like a Luca Toni. No. And that's, I think, why they brought Balotelli in. But then they were afraid about the red cards, I guess. With, why didn't they play Balotelli if they brought him in? No idea. They needed someone who could just kick. to like, yep. there's a, And my, my cousin's a Juventus fan. And he's like, look who Juventus got. They got this guy. Um, I forget what, what country he's from. Uh, he, he's just a striker. He gets the ball on his foot. One, two touches. Bang. It's yeah. like a laser to the net. Italy doesn't have, if you look, how many games, other than that three to one that they won, remember the first round of, of the year of the Euros, they kind of beat a team, they got three goals that yep. one. Besides that, that, it was, yeah. There was, it was a one goal game or mm -hmm. like we beat Spain on penalty kicks, even the final, mm -hmm. we, we, we won in the, we didn't even score the first goal. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, um, England scored the first and then the defenseman came in. England, the, defense the Toronto Maple Leafs of soccer, yeah. England. <laughs> England. Is Sorry. it their year this yeah. year? Is yeah. it? Is, I it hope it might not. be this year. Oh, really? <laughs> not Sorry. the Leafs, England. <laughs> we um, know it's not going to be. Leafs. I know your answer to the Leafs. Um, <laughs> they don't have that strike. Even no. even in the final, we won on penalty kicks. That could have went either way. Yeah. Do you agree with that? A hundred percent. It could have gone either way. But do you agree with penalty kicks? You know what? There isn't just a, a there isn't a, there is an exciting element to penalty kicks, but it's kind of like with hockey. They don't do the shootout during the playoffs in the Stanley Cup because there's just too much up for grabs. And yeah. to do that, to end it, can you imagine a team wins? Mind you, you probably take the Leafs winning on a shootout and not I'll winning as anything. opposed to not winning the I'll Stanley take, Cup. Yeah. But but it it won't. You know that. It just will never come to hockey. I, I, I get why they do it because you're just you you're want physically tired, yeah. you know, like, and you got to play in a couple of days again. Which, yeah. And soccer's, look, I'm not saying other sports aren't physically demanding, yeah. but soccer, you're like, you're, you're you know, running across. You're running well, soccer's big, so low scoring that you don't have a choice. The game could go yeah. six hours and nobody scores. You, you know what I mean? Whereas it'd be hockey, amazing to watch them play for six hours. Just keep hockey, watching. Game more scoring, keep watching. So. Guys are like yeah. passing. Yeah. Like, and then already it happens in soccer where guys pass out. But I think for the final, maybe for the absolute final where there's no games the next day and it's the end. I agree with you. Maybe they should just play it out. I agree. That's it. But then we've won. I mean, what was it? 94? When um, 
Roberto Baggio missed it, right? We won and lost on penalty kicks. So, yeah, we've won and lost. So, uh, you know, you take it when it comes, and that's it. But this year, it's not but coming. think about it. I think 2002. <laughs> we, uh, that was in Korea in 2002? I can't remember. Yeah. No, sorry, 2006. 2000, it was the year I got married. I was 2006 my, I, was in Italy. No, Germany. 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 And I was in my, but I Italy was, I was on my honeymoon. Yeah. And uh, What a year to be on your I honeymoon. I was in my room watching <laughs> soccer. And uh, I know it's weird. I missed the whole Zidane thing. And I had to watch the, the replay. Shove. Yeah. The shove and everything. And uh, that's where um, Zidane, was it Matarazzi, was yeah. calling Zidane. He was insulting Zidane. His mom or something. That's part of it. The church. Yeah, yeah your mother, she's... <laughs> slot, your sister, it's slot. I'm, I, I'm sorry. That, this is what I heard. It's not me saying it. <laughs> no, that's that's what apparently. Like he was really. Yeah, that's what he was saying. But yeah. is, that's part of sports too. That's yeah. a whole other conversation. Yeah. Like there's the you playing against people yeah. with your talents, and then there's the chirping. But it happens in basketball, right? Yeah. And don there's a lot of chirping. Go. You think that they're like, I'm hey, how was your dinner? <laughs> but they're 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 chirping yeah. each other out there. Right? Even hockey does it too, right? Yeah. But you know what? That's where you have to keep your cool. Same thing when we talked about, you know, Will Smith and uh, you got to keep your cool. Chris Rock. You got to keep your cool. I mean, he at that point, a, you're a not getting up to. And look, in hockey, it happens. They they drop the gloves sometimes, and it's a little more. But like, yeah. But in that that cost France. You know, true. That cost, that the, the, cost the, France the World, the Cup. World Cup because the Zidane was there. Yeah, that's the bottom line. Frank, so you're you're back to performing. You're doing your stand up. Uh, now that the pandemic, I could say, can I say the pandemic? Uh, this is going to freak somebody out. The pandemic is over, or we're post-pandemic, almost over, or are almost there. You don't know about the new variant? Yeah. Oh, I know about all the variants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife tells me about them every day, and oh, I was like, God, "You're not going to believe this." So, a summer of touring. Are you going to go back into at some point? I guess you're going to go back uh, on the road in America. Another. I'm just. You know what? I'm doing like I'm, I'm doing the club here, which is a lot of fun. Like I want it, and my my agent had. I have things booked locally. Uh, my agent had before the before this all started again. Uh, my agent wanted me. There was a cool little club uh, uh, theater in uh, Toronto called the Paradise Theater, which I'm going to be at May 13th. Um, he sort of booked it before everything shut down. So we decided, okay, now we're going to do it. We're going to do it now that things are opening and stuff. So I'm doing that, but I'm doing some small, I'm doing local. I'm just going to slowly get back. I, I do want to write more stuff. For me, I need to have fun again back on stage. And jumping into big shows right away, for me, I, I don't, like, I'll do it if it's there, like mm -hmm. in other cities. But um, I think I want to get the creative juices going again and i've been doing a little more on social media with stuff uh with skits and actually cosmo i did a movie a few years ago called darts and then the pandemic you know it took a long time the, this kid from thunder bay cosmo he wrote it and he he just faced called darts it's called darts, about darts? it's about darts? four ex dart champions oh wow it's an independent film you know, it's more adult. And you were one of the champions? I was the ex-Italian champ. And, and, and that's going to actually view... Uh, they're doing a screening. Oh, it's finally uh, coming Toronto. out. Well, they're, he's doing it himself. Like okay. this poor, and it's tough. You know, you, you're, Canada's not great to their artists all the time. Uh, you know, again, we talked about Italians, but like, you know, unless, unless the big networks are putting their own money in, like just to buy something and showcase... Okay, listen, they all have their opinion on what they like, but... This kid worked so hard. He's an Italian kid, Cosmo Cosmo Tucci from Toronto and uh, from Thunder Bay. He lives in Toronto now, and he um, wrote this movie, directed it, shot it, financed it, got a bit of help here and there, and uh, we did it, and we had fun. You know, for me, it was like an independent film. I get to work on some acting chops. I didn't know what was going to happen. He took a little while. He was doing it himself, so he mm -hmm. edited it all, and it was... He wrote a lot of stuff. It's about four dart players and following them around a little bit until they get to the tournament. And um, this thing was three hours long when he first started editing it. And he's like, Frank, this thing's longer than the Titanic right now. <laughs> and, and, but he, and you know what happens with the Titanic. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> and he didn't want to let go of the ideas. There were so many funny things that he liked yeah. about the movie. So it is a comedy. It is a comedy, yeah. yeah. And uh, he... He finally had to cut it down. He cut it down to like an hour and 40 minutes because 
like festivals weren't or whatever uh, they weren't accepting it so he, he he has submitted it to a few film fests but you know no one could go to them so they still gave out awards and it won some awards like well, it, I, for, I didn't even know about this for so. independent films yeah and, and so wait if somebody wanted to watch it now right now it's just going to screen in toronto if if anybody from toronto it's at the the royal theater okay, it's yeah. going to be may 20 it's on my instagram okay may so 27. follow me on instagram um anthony factor <laughs> <Fact check. laughs> may 27th i believe is uh is um the screening we're just going to screen it have a good time and then hopefully more things happen and i for oh and so i've been doing so now i got to become good friends with cosmo and he's been coming up with these ideas he's like frank my my mom used to do this to me or when we moved into a new house my dad you know when we bought the new house we're like hey do you like our house and my dad was checking the water pressure and checking the height of the sink and or whatever and some stuff i threw in there so i've been doing skits with him okay and that's where i dress you know you're dressing up like characters and stuff and that's so that's another thing i've been doing you know, as opposed to just doing stand up. But it's really weird. So this is what I gotta say now too is people see the Bad as and Weather Network or they see the Bachi readings or they see me playing characters. And then I post some of my stand up uh shows. Like I'm gonna be in Montreal this weekend and some people actually said to me, Oh, I was hoping you were gonna do like a Bad as Weather Network and I'm like and it, 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 two different things. It's too different. Yeah. Like we do things on Instagram that you don't do on your that show. are that are just yeah. to get some traffic and ideas mm -hmm. and then and then you do th and then but then there's the regular stand-up so it's gotta let people know that uh but there's an idea maybe i gotta do some characters up there i love when you do the characters when you do like sometimes you pretend to be right your mom and dad and then you're you when you were younger or yeah, yeah. one of your sons once that played the, my son played me when he was in yeah the car or something and yeah. yeah or or yeah my sons played me you with know, the glasses i love on. that stuff yeah and, and i'll tell you something um, I love stand up, but I love playing characters and like doing this movie, Darts. It's a little risque. There's some adult stuff mm -hmm. in there. Uh, it was so much fun being a character. It's fun playing a part, too. Yeah. yeah. It's so much and fun. And you do it very well. You do imitations really well. And I was always kind of that guy. I can't say I do every accent perfect or nothing, but um, I have fun being like certain characters if, yeah. if it you know people say can you be this guy and uh, we'll work on it and it's it's frank fun. i love the fact that even when your buddy angelo was here you guys are just real guys that's yeah. what i'm all about you know a guy's guy <laughs> yeah and and you're just you're you're well spoken you're you're raw you'll talk about anything you're not on you know even when you're on doing your comedy show it always feels authentic and real. Oh, and thanks, it man. was a true pleasure, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. My wife always makes fun of me. Why do you always say from the bottom of your heart? Where else would it be from? Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming. It was great having breakfast with uh, you, my <laughs> wife, Anthony upstairs, and then doing this podcast together. You're great. Thanks. Uh, hey, thanks and I got to thank you, Frank. And, and I know you wanted to end it there, but um, I'm going to say something. Um, <laughs> First of all, I appreciate coming here. It was, I, first of all, you fed me, <laughs> and, and I think we're eating after. <laughs> yep. um, you know, you always, you always put me on the show at Virgin. Not always, but you were there for guys like, like me. Well, I tried. Sometimes you tried. I, I know, And I know it, was o yeah. it wasn't always your decision, no, I was, but I'll tell you something. I tried and I pushed it, but sometimes I couldn't do it, right? When I say sometimes we don't get support, and I love Canada, don't get me wrong, but sometimes, unless you're some big name coming from the States, you don't always get the support. And we're trying to build something here, like guys like me and Ange and, and some other comedians. And, and, and there were times where you and, and Natash, uh, as I called her Natash <laughs> all the time, um, you helped us out. And I gotta say thanks to you. I, when you said for me to come here, there was no way I wasn't coming. To be honest, I didn't see the Instagram I'm bad. People I hope say, I was, I hope I wasn't pushy no, because sometimes they're like I said, no, I'm actually, I, no, I, what I do is I see see your Instagram post come up or your story, and it's like Montreal with the weekend, the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Frank, Frank, hey Frank, uh, you whatever you're. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think I should have just you know. And this, well, you're busy, but but I did. So sorry if I didn't seem like I was harassing you. And I, I'll tell you something. Montreal came up a couple weeks ago. I'm I uh, I I had planned on booking here, but I wanted again. I wanted to play around again. I wanted to get back on stage. But my agent called me and said, someone can't make a weekend in Montreal. Would, would you, do you want to go? I go, of course. 
and that's why and I didn't it, it, I didn't call everyone to say hey I'm coming mm-hmm. I just oh geez, it was a, <laughs> did you hear that can we edit that a couple of bachi readings and I heard that in the thing is that hilarious oh my god um, that was brio worthy that was it was <laughs> Panzerot. oh my god <laughs> um, there was no way I wasn't coming man and I have to thank you Frank because where where you could you helped out guys like me and Ange. So, and it wasn't just, you know, the, the festival always gets you, you know, the interviews and stuff, but sometimes we were just coming and doing our own shows. And if you could, you would put us on. And I, I, I'll never forget that. You're, if you're fan, from the bottom of my heart, Frank. I, I appreciate you. Can you say that in Bares? From Ugo? Uh, da sot ukur, uh, <laughs> you know, so to put ukur under there too, under my ass, uh, everywhere, <laughs> under the pal, uh, from the bottom of uh, your balls. I, I could you. <laughs> um, thank you so much, man. Thanks. And you know what? It means a lot that you, you can't equally that you're supporting the podcast because uh, this is not, you know, corporately funded. Um, as you know, I started doing this. I put this whole thing together. It's beautiful. And it wouldn't be the same if I couldn't get people like you coming oh, on thanks, here. Man. So it makes a difference to have you here. And I thank you once again and wish you the best. Say hi thanks, to your buddy, wife, for sure. your sons, and your I mom. Will. We almost Ever, missed oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I know. We almost Scott. did a Yao Ming. Yeah. <laughs> Yao Ming. Yao, Yao Ming. And your mom. And thank you so much. We'll see you again soon. For Anytime sure. you're welcome for back. Sure, all man. you guys are. Thanks. I'll be back. Thanks, Thanks man. so much, Frank. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Number 19 of the drive by brought to you by Playground. Don't forget to grab your $10 in freeway play. That's me. That's right. Check it out at playground.ca slash freewayfrank or by clicking on the link on YouTube below to get your $10 and you head over to Playground and there you go. We get you started. Also, they have something for everyone at Playground. Check out Pas de Rouge on Mondays and Fridays. They have free gas Tuesdays, booming Wednesdays and ladies night Wednesdays, hot seat draw Thursdays and sweet Saturdays where they roll out the sweet table at 10 p.m. every Saturday night. That's very cool. Find out why everyone is talking about playground. And we're not only talking about here in Quebec. People come from other provinces outside of the country to come to this premier spot for gaming. So check it out. Once again, it's Playground. For more information at playground.ca, and I'll see you there. This is The Drive-By with Freeway Frank. Watch all episodes of The Drive-By on YouTube. Listen in on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, Podbean, and tune in.